Oh, how do I do that? Oh, I have to change my... I have to click? <laughs> just... Just right-click your name in the upper right corner and uh -huh. change color. Perfect! Hello, everybody! It's good to see you all again. How was the week? <clears throat> Episode it, was, it was... It was... <laughs> It was seven days too long. Seven days too long. Well, wow. we're here now. We're a little bit late, and there's a couple of things amiss. Uh, sorry about the cameras being off for a stream, if anybody's uh, kicking around there. I don't have the dice on display, but uh, I've got some other stuff that's, like, soon to arrive, so long as Amazon doesn't fuck with me, and uh, I'm just going to wait till that shows up, so hopefully it'll be here for the next week. So for now, it's tabletop with a little log on the side. Uh, for you guys, it's your first session for your group. There's very little to tell, given that, uh, there's no previous session to, uh, um, to really go over. So we're just gonna kind of dive into it here and, uh, get right to it. So let's see. You're a group of roughly about five adventurers, all with your own motives. Um, there is very little that kind of ties you together in terms of uh, objectives or maybe previous organizations, but over the past 30 or so days, over an incredibly long trip uh, traveling along the major highway here in Skyfall, you've all gradually come to know one another. Um, the original person to hop on was Tessa, who uh, hopped onto the caravan in Valu. After that, uh, picking up a, a frat boy wizard along the way and a bunch of other sort of colorful characters until the five of you had done a little bit of work at your final destination there, making your way all the way across to Hillcrest and getting to know one another. I would say that your group is familiar with the Great Soul's Curse. You all know how that works and have experienced its time shifts once or twice. And you're also familiar to an extent with a little bit of backstory from some of the other characters, though obviously a few things have been kind of kept under wraps. The work that you've done around town consists of some sort of minor hunting jobs, um, clearing out pests and uh, dealing with a couple of convicts, some very sort of standard bounty hunter work, as well as uh, some other less exciting work like protecting businesses where nothing really happens, and you're sort of just standing around in the evening and getting a couple of coppers and, and that kind of thing. There's a certain establishment in this town that you guys have been staying in for the last little while called Ursa's Tavern, and it's here in the morning where our story begins. The first person to wake up is... Oh, Tessa. You're the first person to get up there's no work or anything that you really have scheduled for the day, but it's pretty common for your group to sort of uh, meet up in the main tavern room, uh, given that you more or less do things together and kind of talk about what it is that you guys are going to be doing at that time. What do you want to do? So about what time in the morning is this? If you kind of look beyond your window there, you can see that the sun is rising up and you've actually woken incredibly early. It's like ever so barely over the horizon. You'd guess it's anywhere between like four to six o'clock in the morning. Like it's it's pretty early. Hmm. I think I'll take a stroll through the town while it's quiet to see if there's anything eerie around. Oh, okay. So you leave the shop. Um, and head out of the tavern, and as you pass by the uh, the main hall there, you get into the, the large room, you see the tavern keep, he just kind of gives you a nod, and head out the door. It's a really brisk morning, it's kind of got a, a cool breeze that's wandering through the streets. You're in a portion of Hillcrest, which is the outer uh, layer where there aren't any real city walls or anything like that, but a huge expanse of buildings kind of stretches out in every direction. You can see everything from little cobblestone roads to little dirt ones, but there's really not a whole lot of people out right now. So it's it's just sort of you going for a morning stroll in the quiet. Gradually over this time, the rest of you guys begin to wake up, and uh, Zakul <laughs> and Trent, you guys are the next to wake. 
you guys want to do as you get up? Do we all have our own rooms? You do have your own rooms, yes. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, Jimmy. Do I see Zipul? Are you heading out of your room? Yeah, like heading down into like the main area. Sure, so cool. Are you heading out of your room as well? Sure. Um, as you come out into the hallway, you probably hear me finishing a prayer in my room, and it went something like, "Azun, cover my journeys today. Amen." Okay. So briefly, after hearing a couple of words from the door, sort of across the hall. Uh, Trent, you see that the door flies open there, and uh, Zakul steps outside. Uh, it's the same sort of uh, gold dragonborn that you've been doing work with for the last couple of weeks, and uh, it appears that he too has gotten up kind of early. Uh, yo, what's up, Zach? How's it going, man? <laughs> wow. This is perfect. Good morning, young Hatchling Trent. Hatchling? Yo, I ain't born no egg. <laughs> Come on, son, why are you tripping? The yolk of your mother's egg still dries on your forehead, young oh, Hatchling. God. Yo, you're creepy as shit, man. Yo, what are we getting up to today, man? I suppose we should gather the group before we look for work. I heard yo, Paladin Merchant story. Yo, his... yo, don't say anything. But, um, my coin purse is completely empty, so if we don't find work, I'm sleeping on the streets tonight. <laughs> so we gotta, we gotta find something, man. Likewise, the Zoom calls for work. At this point. Like the lazy. Uh, now we had gone over this. You want to be called Niche, right? Not Edge? <laughs> no. Uh, it's, it's pronounced Niche. Niche. It okay. is. It, it looks like niche. Uh, it can be pronounced both ways, or correct, but niche is how he would say it. Gotcha. Niche, yep. you hear what sounds like a couple of people talking outside, and in the little bit of your early waking up, um, you're not entirely sure who it is, kind of pulling a bit of sleep out of your eye, and then you realize that it's these two party members, um, Sakul and Trent, mm-hmm. who are speaking outside. Likewise, Merton, as you begin to wake, uh, you can hear a couple of people talking outside and recognize the voices. What do you two want to do? Um, <clears throat> Nitch would like to get up and kind of just uh, very quietly put his ear against the door and just kind of listen into what they're talking about. Sure. It seems to be something about uh, money troubles, actually. And you hear at the tail end of what Trent was saying with having zero money left and uh, worry that he might be left out onto the street. And Zakul had uh, sort of um, dismissed it, saying that, you know, he was young and... Uh, Trent took it strangely. Merton, how about you? <laughs> oh, well, you might be well. muted. This Still muted. Is flipping. I believe in you, okay. Will. You're a strong, independent man. <laughs> what about now? Ooh. There you go. Is it better? Mm-hmm. Can hear you. Okay, sorry. Counter's thing is confusing. Uh, Merton would be if there's a mirror in the room. Touching up his paladin disguise, uh, casting disguise self on himself, making him look ready for the day. Ah, okay. So I would say that the moment that that amulet lands around your neck, you take on that form. Okay, cool. So uh, if if you sleep without it on, you could do that, I suppose. I would always have it on then. (laughs) You'd probably just leave it, yeah. It's not coming off. So uh, you've you've gotten used to this um, over the time that you've had to wear this amulet, and the fact that when you look down, instead of seeing like sort of spectral hands, it's that of uh, you know like a, a warm-blooded human man, um, has just kind of become every day for you. As you get up, what do you want to do? All of your stuff is where you left it. it seems like you weren't robbed in the evening or anything. I'll make sure my my facial hair is looking good. Uh... <laughs> flowers in my hair looking good looking happy and then i'll go find that trent character who knows about the most evil man ah you open the door to find trent there and he's talking with uh with zakul trent you you guys see the door open up and merton steps out into the hall yo what's up murky merc (laughs) 
How are you doing this morning, Trent? Hey, well? you know, I'm uh, I'm hanging in there. Got a little bit of shut eye last night, but uh, you know, the bar Just was actually uh, kind of fun last night, so didn't uh, didn't get too much sleep. You don't think uh, you don't think we like skipped or anything last night, do you? Well, we're still upstairs. We could go ask the barkeep. Let's see what's going around. Should uh, we wait for the others? Illusion, as I understand, this is like more of a well-known thing now than in session one, or yes. is that not true? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And and as that, um, it's worth mentioning that people are more familiar with the myth than they were in the first, and will treat you differently. Um, so you might want to keep that to yourself at times, or you may want to leverage it if you so wish. Yeah, I don't know I what am. the myth is, I'm sorry. Uh, as a player character, Table Talk, um, uh -huh. you're, you're a great soul, which basically means... Oh, that... I do know. I'm sorry. I just was unfamiliar with that term. Sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Well, when okay. Nitch and Tessa uh, get up, we can convene here and decide what we want to do for the day. Sure. You said so you I... were only okay. Did you not sleep well? Uh... I uh, I had this, this chick hanging off me last night, like all night, down at the bar, and... Uh, I don't know, I wasn't too into it, but I think I might have told her I'd go out today. Mm. And I, I I, just can't afford it, man. Well, I'm you better broke. hope we didn't switch then, huh? Or well, I kind of hope we did. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. <laughs> you well, know, man, I'm convene... trying to get out of this. What do you say we convene downstairs, wait for the others to catch up? Nonsense, yeah, Paula. Sure. Nonsense, Paula de Merton. It is Nonsense. high time they woke. Okay, well, I... we'll wake them. At this point, I bash on uh, Mitch's door. Nitch, something yeah. hits against the side of your door there. Ah. And with your ear, like, on the door, it actually kind of jostles you back for a second. What do you want to do? I like to wait a moment. Okay. Uh, you hit on the door, yeah, so cool, what, and there's no it? response. And then shortly afterwards, you hear the voice of your party member from past the door. Nitch, it is time for you to right, awaken. We have work to do today. Or work to find today, I should say. Yeah, yeah, I'll be right out. I'll lightly rap on Tessa's door. Okay. And Tessa, good morning. 18 money. Now, Tessa, would you describe your character as being kind of... Like, would you describe yourself as being, like, upbeat or kind of, like, grumpy in the mornings? Or... Oh, a super morning person. Super morning person. Like, obnoxiously yeah. morning per Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> ray of goddamn sunshine everywhere. So, you guys have known each other for some time, and Merton, as you tap on the door, you don't hear a response. Which is odd, because even on, you know, days where uh, you guys maybe have a drink in the evening or something like that, Tessa is up and at him, and she's, she's rather chipper, too. And you hear nothing from past the door. Uh, is whose room is next to Tessa's room? Uh, I'd say maybe like uh, um, Nitch's room is next to it. Hmm. Oh. Doesn't seem uh, she's in there, gentlemen. The young, the young Hetzling Tessa may be in the bar area already. It's possible. You're right. Well, she's always uh, nice and happy in the morning. She could to be down there definitely fair enough well um you guys down to get some work today of course cool you have anything in mind I'm broke uh broke. something that pays better than sitting around watching a shop front all day <laughs> well, maybe and i like turn and nice. stare like deliberately at at uh is that cool no like it was his fault we had that job Oh, okay. <laughs> so cool, did you get that job? Sure. Yeah, like it was, I mean, it was like... honest work, but apparently these humans, you know, they're they're sort of here and there. Right, or half it, off, it, I guess. You know, it wasn't like multiple days of it, right? It was just like... No, it was like a weekend. Like, you know, it was like we two days find... of standing around doing nothing. Right, the only thing we could find, considering there was no like other options available. It was enough to pay for your rooms here and get some food, but uh, yeah, it wasn't exactly exciting work. Well, work is work, and we'll get by on what we can until something better comes our way, right? Yeah, yeah. So wait, 
Is Nick? Did Dicky say he's coming out? As as you ask that, the door opens and uh. Good morning, Nikki. guys. Yo, what's it, up, Nicky? It's, it, it's Nitch for the tenth time. Nitch, morning. I'm gonna still go with Nicky though. I, I'd <laughs> prefer you, whatever. Oh, Trent, you and your nicknames. That's my thing, yo. We gotta find Team Money though. Where's she at? Team Money. <laughs> Best nickname, man. Right. That's <laughs> awesome. We may as well run on downstairs. Uh, <laughs> don't think she's up here. Okay. She Meanwhile, a... somewhere out Can in I... the town, Tessa, I'd like you to go ahead and make just a straight luck roll for me. Whoa! I love luck rolls. I'm so good at these. Oh, 16. Starting off strong. First roll for session one. Uh, let's see here. As you're wandering around outside, you've developed a bit of like a almost a sixth sense through your time uh, in the lands. Your main hobby is adding to this book of yours, which is a, uh, a collection of mysteries, and some of those you've solved and other ones you haven't, but the hunt uh, is really what interests you, and you've kind of documented the whole thing. And as the years have gone by, you've managed to pick up on um, this sort of ephemeral sense, like when a mystery is sort of coming around, and your mundane life is about to be interrupted with that thing that you so love. It's not directional or anything like that, but you feel like today might be the day. And then just with that, you hear something. It's like a metallic clink at the bottom of your shoe. And when you look down, you see what looks like two gold pieces, nearly covered in dirt. Oh, I'm gonna pick them up. <laughs> They're grubby, but uh, somebody oh. seems to have lost them in the uh, the dirt road here. Maybe Press I... the digitation of those. They're sparkling clean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're grubby. Okay. Press the two. They're sparkling clean. <laughs> Into my coin purse they go. The rest of the town is starting to get up. You've been wandering for maybe a few minutes, like maybe five or ten. And uh, you hear what sounds like somebody sliding their window um, as a, a shop nearby begins to sort of rustle into existence. A door opens up. Somebody comes out and starts sweeping. You hear what sounds like a a couple of farm animals off in the distance. The town is beginning to come alive. What do you want to oh. do? I am going to... Let's see, how far am I away from the bar? Uh, you're like a few blocks down the road, maybe. Oh. Hmm. I'm going to see if there's any help wanted signs as I'm strolling back towards the bar. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, Make a second luck check there. Oh, it's a, that's a nine. Okay. Well, look really weird for Chris. There is a a little posting board nearby. There's a little crossroads where uh, about five different dirt uh, dirt roads sort of seem to meet at town, and where the main post comes up, kind of pointing where everything is from that direction. People like to often put up little wanted boards and things like that, little notes and jobs that they have here and there. And you guys have taken a couple jobs from this spot before. But as you make your way over, the only thing that you find is um, just almost stuff that's sort of like beneath you. Like jobs that you can do, but they're mind-numbing. For instance, you see one that was a... Uh, it's a job to guard a shop in town, like a little bit closer towards the wall. And you know that this is just standing around for like a couple of silver pieces. It's just like very mind-numbing work. Yeah. You can take it if you want, like pull the thing off of the board if you want to keep it. Might be useful later, but uh, that's pretty much the only thing that you see there, really. Um, otherwise, there's just little discarded pieces of paper, like you know the the little bits attached to the nail from old jobs that people have torn away already. Now, just make your way back to the tavern. Okay. You guys are all kind of collected over there in the hallway, and you had stepped down into the bar, right? Could I have slid down the railing? <laughs> sure. It's it's like a half flight of stairs. It's really not a very big um, uh, raised Better. portion, but you managed to just kind of like shoo, and uh, land in the area there. It's empty, given how Do early it is the... in the morning. Do I know the barkeep's name here? Yeah, I'd is say that for problem? pretty much your whole time here in town, which is you know roughly uh, about like 20 days or so, you've been staying at the same place, and you know that the tavern keep's name is Cal spelled K-A-L. 
And it's uh, just for clarity, it's uh, it's the Ursa's tavern, right? Mm -hmm. Like a bear. Yeah, it's got a bear theme to it. Um, he seems to have acquired a number of bear pelts throughout the years, mm -hmm. and cool. there is a bear's head mounted on both the left and right wall, as well as every bed has a bear fur um, blanket to them. They're like they're very comfortable. But uh, Cal uh, is there. He seems like he's he's got like a cup of something warm, and he's just kind of like cleaning up the uh, the main bar there, just sort of wiping it with a cloth. Cal, my man, what's up? <laughs> uh, he looks over. I need to ask you a couple questions. Are you the kind of person to uh, tip or break things? <laughs> uh, I am not the type to break things. Uh, although I am the type to kind of make things rowdy. Right. Uh, I don't personally get very rowdy. Like I'll, you know, I'll drink, but I'm more into it for like the fun than like the I need to drink my sorrows away and get wasted. I'm more of just like a like a social drinker. But like if somebody is chugging, like you know, I'm the guy standing there counting for him. Make a persuasion roll for me. This is a sure. retroactive one, of course. Okay, yeah. that's a good roll on my end. Let's see what you get. Uh, 11 plus... Negative 2. 4. Okay. So, 15. Uh, Cal is somebody that you're on pretty good terms with, and he is a fairly large, semi-portly, but incredibly muscular man. He's probably about 6 foot 2, 6 foot 3. Um, maybe about, like, in his mid-40s, with, like, a sort of, like, um small tuft of hair, like, short cut that almost doesn't suit how big, like, his frame is. And he looks over and kind of gives you a wave, and, uh, he knows you by name at this point, just says, Trent, hey, what do you need? Hey, man, well, um, you know, I've, I've been here for a little while, and I'd like to think you and me have become buddies by this point, so, uh, I gotta ask, uh, is there anything to do in this town for money? That's more interesting than standing outside somebody's shop for hours and hours and hours. Uh, I'd like you to make a perception roll, please, so cool. <laughs> Coming in strong, see? <laughs> Paladin's are cool rules a four plus zero for perception. Nice. Okay. Uh, never mind. I didn't say anything. So as, <laughs> as you make your way over towards the bar, um, there's a pause that comes from Cal as you go and ask him this. And uh, he kind of looks over towards the rest of your group over your shoulder and kind of gives them a wave as well. And he turns back to you, Trent, and he says, Well, there's plenty to do around town. It just depends on kind of work you're looking for I'm looking for something uh, something team money can write a story about something exciting you know I want to explore someplace I want to I want to take down the bad guys I want to you know get my name out there so I can start selling this goddamn beer I make every night <laughs> you're uh you're a good guy Trent but nothing really comes to mind right now. I come up behind uh, Trent, putting my uh, hand on his arm, or uh, his shoulder here. You are still young and you don't realize. Those uh, quick bouts to fame will usually end in your demise. Patron, Earth, uh, Patron Cal, give uh, my young friend and me some breakfast here. Sure. He gives you a nod and kind of goes over and uh, begins to fetch what looks like some stew from an already boiling kettle there that he seems to start quite early in the morning. Places it there. You have paid for food and board, I'd say for the next couple of days, but you know in about two days or so, things are going to run out. You can also tell what, uh, what date uh, it currently is, because Cal keeps a calendar behind him. So anytime oh, that you guys are in the bar, you can just see what, what day it is. You happen to know right now it is the do, 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 do. give me two seconds please here. tell me we time skipped please tell me 
Please don't do that. It's the 8th of spring. And I talked myself went... into a corner. <laughs> you went to bed on the 7th, so no, no time has been lost. Alright, I'm gonna, gonna, like, seeing that, I'm gonna run over to the window of the bar and, like, peek out and, like, be like, Yo, has that, has that chick been by looking for me, Cal? <laughs> he pauses for a second and kind of looks around and he, he looks back and says, uh, I don't know what you mean. You know, that girl who, there, Trent. that girl who was digging through my coin purse last night. He just shakes his head. Sorry, can't help you. So... Did you guys see her? Am I? Did having... we see her? Yeah, during the evening uh, previous, Trent had spent the uh, very last bit of money that he had. And, uh, you know, he, he did, as he normally does, kind of going a little bit overboard. And there was a, uh, a patron there that had kind of taken notice of this. And she kind of got nice and, uh, you know, cozy up to Trent until the key point where he could no longer purchase drinks anymore. And she was gone. Hmm. Well, Trent... Um... You know, some women are only interested in your <laughs> in your coin, and seeing as you have none, you might not see her today. Nah, dude, I I would I I'm fine with her not being here. I she ran me for like six gold pieces last night, dude. Well, much like Zakul says, you are young. Now, Lucian, I have a question. For We've sure. been here for about a month. You said twenty days or so. And... 20 days, yeah. okay. There's no and, month uh, or week, by the way. It's just 10 days mm -hmm. and seasons. Okay. So, matter of 20 days. Part of my yes. criminal background is that I create, like, um, acquaintances in places I go. But I have oh. created one in the time we've been here. I would say uh, go ahead and make a luck roll for me. Mm -hmm. I shall. While he's rolling, our season's still the standard 100 days illusion. That is an 18. Oh. You do have a contact, but things here are very preliminary. It's not anybody big, but you happen to know a fence in town. Somebody who will purchase stolen goods. And uh, he hasn't offered you any work or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it's sort of like a shoe in the door into that kind of, you know, sphere of influence. I'll definitely take it. Yeah. Um... Getting over to the bar here, uh, Zakul, you notice that uh, um, the barkeep turns towards you, and Cal kind of gives you a look, and, uh, you know, looks over your shoulder as well, staring at Trent, who's kind of by the window, peeking around to see if that woman may be near. And he says, uh, you keep an eye out on him there. Of course. I don't allow the, uh, the hatchlings in my care or watch to, uh, Lay broken on the street. He nods Always and he says, with the egg analogies. Speaking of hatchlings, have you seen young Tessa? <laughs> uh, as this is said, and you can kind of hear this quietly in the background, Trent, you see what looks like Tessa wandering down the street, and she's coming back towards the tavern here. I just, like, my flute holler I out, T-Money! <laughs> I'm gonna stop playing my flute, because I heard what he said. <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to playing my flute. And pretend I didn't hear him. <laughs> As you look over towards the window there kind of thing, or, like, note that he's there, you also see there's somebody else. There's a, there's a man outside of his house who's, like, washing something in a pail with a bunch of cold water, and he kind of, like, looks over at this guy screaming, looks at you, and then, like, looks back. <laughs> Certainly know how to draw attention, Tent. With that, I'm sure we'll find, for good or worse, we'll find people. Now, this is a bar, after all. If we're looking for work, we should probably check some other places. I agree. Hey, Cal. Cal looks over, and, uh, Nitch, I want to know, what do you think your relationship would be like with a somewhat no-nonsense bartender like Cal? I'm pretty no-nonsense myself. I ask for an ale. I pay when I ask for it. I tip you the normal talk, percentage. Or are you very kind of business like? Um at least with Cal. Hey, hey, how you doing? One AL please, type of deal. So like the the bare bones Hello, how are you? When you ask a cashier but yeah. you don't really give a fuck what the answer is? Absolutely. Okay. So uh 
As you call over, Cal, you know, gives you his attention and, and uh, you know, turns towards you. What do you need, Nitch? Hey. hey, was curious if you knew. The local guard here, the garrison, they accept any mercenary work? I'm tired of standing around these shops getting paid for just just standing there. You know of anything? I, uh, as he's saying that, I, like, lean up around his shoulder for hours. Hours. hours and hours. <laughs> and then I run back over to watch out the window again. Sure, you look but back, but Tessa's not front. there, and a cool breeze comes in with a creak as the main door opens up, and uh, T-Money, as she's so dubbed, steps in. I turn around and give her a drum roll. <laughs> T-Money, what's up? Where you been? I'm going to play a little flute tune when he does it. <laughs> ah, young Tessa. We were just thinking of going to the bounty board to look for uh, work today. There's nothing there. Trust me. Uh, seriously. Is there, is Cal, there any please tell me. In this town? I mean, maybe Cal would know. Yeah, Cal, please Did, tell me you know something. In the 20 Morning, days we've Cal. been here... Uh, well, here, gather around. There is something. I'm like... All right! Rushing over to the bar, leaning across, hands, like, on my chin. I need everyone to make an intelligence check as Cal turns towards your group and says, You guys remember Benevolence? Uh, Is this a history check? Mine's a three! Uh, I'd say straight int in this case. I don't think my dice rolled. I pulled it out. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get a flick it. of the wrist. We'll watch you there, and post whatever your uh, your intro ends up being in the, uh, the chat there. There it goes. Oh gosh, that lag. There you go. I, I rolled a it's nineteen, the... so that's an eighteen. Uh oh, right. I have to pull up my sheet. <laughs> nice. Um, so I have okay, just well. a nat nineteen. Oh, you have to you have to say it. All right. Uh, if I get a if I get the group to do a roll, it helps if you guys all post it in the bottom left there, because that way I can just kind of look at it. In in game or global? Game. In game. game. Okay. So, at this point, he, he mentions benevolence, and uh, Tessa, you think he's talking about the word benevolence when he says that? Like, uh, he's about to go into some sort of lesson or something like that? But the rest of you remember that there's actually another regular here, uh, who spends like a good deal of time in this bar and she rents the rooms for multiple days on end and you guys have seen her during the last little while that you've been here. There's a tiefling woman who goes by the name of Benevolence and you haven't seen her for some time, probably about seven or eight days. Hmm. Yeah, I remember her. Well, Cal, she hasn't been in uh, about uh, seven or eight days. Yeah, almost a whole ten day. He kind of gives you a oh nod, and he says, well, <sighs> it's like this. She uh, she said she'd be gone for a while, and uh, me and Benevolence, we go way back, but she hasn't returned, and I don't know her to be late. So if you guys wouldn't mind finding out what happened to her, I'd be willing to pay you myself. What was she doing? Well, this is the note she left me. And he kind of goes over to a cupboard nearby and uh, pulls the thing out and gets this little piece of parchment for you and puts it down kind of in the center of the group so you guys can see. I grab it. It's <laughs> Trent's hand is just whoosh on it. Uh, Trent, you see the note in front of you, and it says, um, Cal, I'm heading out, uh, going to be uh, doing some work with, and you actually recognize the name that's there. It says Lead Boy Expeditions. You know that they're like a little caravan group here. And she says, be back in five days. And then there's a little signature at the bottom and what looks like a, a smiley face almost. What kind of work does she do? He gives you a shrug um, and says, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. Huh. But she's she's been here for quite a while. Um, you could say we're, we're good friends by now, but... I, I wink at him when he says good friends, like like good friends. <laughs> he says, is she an attractive lady or is she like? Uh, I would say, yeah, she she's. 
probably for a about um, like in her mid twenties, sort of thing. She's in shape, oh. um, probably in better shape than some of the members in in your party, at least. Uh, you do see that she wears a set of um, like leather armor through most of the day, unless she's just kind of laying around in the tavern. Does she hide her horns and stuff, or are they like prominently displayed? No, they're very easy to see, and they're quite large, actually. You guys have bumped into a tiefling once or twice on your travels. Um, hers are like abnormally cumbersome. There'd be no way to get a helmet around them. Okay. Show some you guys, patron. Uh, patron Cal. I'm sorry to inform or uh, remind you that people in this line of work or in expeditions tend to disappear, and that normally means they met right. their eyes. Well, I, hey, I get that, but on. she's never done that. Um, yeah. I've gotten one of these You notes. can only die once, unfortunately. <laughs> right, I understand, but... I, I kind of shifted my chair when he says that. I've just got a feeling. I don't think that's what it is. All right. Well, well you know where they were going that. or anything about the expedition? He just shakes his head when you ask. He says, that's all I've got is that note. But she sent, she left us here on my bar about seven days ago. So she's two days late. And she's never on, been late point. for anything. Book, is there... start copying what I said. So you're sending us on a mysterious mission to find a friend of yours. Friend in quotes, Book. But you have no lead. She's just... I, this is all I have. Look, I, I can't okay. offer you much. Um, you know, I make a little bit of coin at the tavern here. Yes. I, I can give you all... I can promise you each five gold. If you can Ooh, find promise. out. promise. Underline that one, <laughs> I, I elbow Zach. Like, see? Told you there was real work here. We'll take Don't it. copy down what Trent says. If, <laughs> if you can get her back. If you can get her back. Well, if we, have, you, we have no if lead? We, if we find out what happened to her, what do you give us then? If you can prove it, I'll still pay you. Alright, fair enough. Dude. Wait, book. Note. Cal, who, who did you work caravan, with in town? Yeah, the, the caravan company. Where are they based out of? Are they uh, here? Yeah. Lead Boy, they're... Yeah, they're just kind of across town. Uh, maybe 10-15 minutes away. Alright. We'll, we'll start right away. And Team Money, sorry, no offense. Team? And Team Money's floating book. Come on. I've known you longer than any of these fools, and they all put up with my nicknames. How do yeah, I. Tea or Tessa? How do I feel about five gold a pop right now with the economy and like how I've seen. Do, do I feel like <laughs> right. he can pay up? Like, so, how do I feel about that? So you would know that. Uh, Five gold for getting her if she's just somewhere else in town or something like that, or like a day away kind of thing, would be a steal. But uh, if you have to travel far, uh, or if uh, she's in some kind of peril, you'd probably see like a couple times more than that. Oh, could I have known that as well? I would say that you would all kind of be familiar with the pricing, unless you're sort of naive about those sort of things. Now, Cal. Depending on where she is, uh, I mean, she seems like a very mysterious lady. If we're going to be gone for potentially multiple ten days at a time, five gold might not even cover the charges of living. Right. We need gear. If she's in town, uh, certainly we'll probably charge you less because we don't want to be stealing your money. But if we have to go somewhere, um, I can see that being a problem. Book we'll start recording everything that happens as of right now. Sure, yeah, well, you uh, kind of, you know, you, make this symbol with your hand and your book flies up and begins to kind of record things. Would you be okay with setting a, a price by day sort of thing instead? It could be better for you if it takes less time. Uh, you see a, a visible grimace comes across Cal's face and he says to you, Look, I, I don't have a lot of gold to offer you, but if we need to increase the price... Well, it could also decrease if she's just in town here. Right. Uh, tell you what, if if she's not out of town, or if, if it's, it's something else, if we need to renegotiate, I'll offer you some, some free nights with, with food. How's that? You guys can stay yeah. here, and depending on how tough it is, I'll, uh, I'll put up with you guys for a bit longer. And he kind of gives you a smile as he says that. 
give him a smile and a polite nod. Good man, Cal. Appreciate it. Well, I'd say this. It's all right. Why don't we try to track her down where she's at in town? And if she's out, we'll come back and let you know what we're headed and might need to renegotiate then. Yeah. Seems fine by me. Just, uh, right. you know, get it done in the morning. I don't want to have to talk about this thing when people are starting to fill in around lunch and all. Well, fair enough. All right, let's go. And I'm like trying to pull everybody over towards the door. I'm going to start Help talking on. to my book as I leave. Good day, Cal. He gives you a nod and kind of bids you all goodbye. He gives you a nod as well, so cool. Uh, a look that he's given you multiple times, pretty much any time that it looks like Trent's about to start trouble in the bar. Mm -hmm. uh, Tessa, what are you saying to your book? We're on a... Currently, we are on our way to the... What is the name of the company? And I'm going to look to my party. Ah, uh, Leadboy. And it was Lead spelled L-E-D-B-O-Y. L-E-D-B-O-Y. Get that down, book. The now book just, like, quickly scribbles it out. About benevolence. Underline that word. I need to look into that. That's a person or the actual that's a capital word. B. Capital that's, B. That's the girl we're going to The find. quill, oh, like, pauses almost the like it's one. a sentient creature looking over to Trent when he says capital B and then, like, you know, gets rid of the B there and makes it a capital. <laughs> a magical eraser? <laughs> mm -hmm. What is this? <laughs> I'll wave the book to turn off. Right. Well, when we get information I mean, To make it a capital B, just add another hump, right? It's not that easy for the book, Trent. It's, it's ready and cursed, okay? <laughs> T-Money. I've been meaning to talk to you about that book. Oh. If you're going to be, you know, rocking around with it and stuff, I'm cool and all, but we got to give it a nickname. You can't just no, be calling it book. Don't name my book. You guys are, like, I'm at the name, door right now I'll about to step outside. <laughs> I, I would be, like, pulling the door open as we're having the conversation. So what, okay. what are you supposed to call the book? I mean, uh, why not B-Money and T-Money? Oh, yeah, B-Money. No, 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 no. First off, I don't even like if the first thing. They're no, pausing at the door. And I, now. and as I say that, I back up, knowing what I've just done. Master criminal <laughs> niche. <laughs> I don't even like the nickname for myself. Howlin and Merton, how about we lead us out to Lead Boy Expedition? I was gonna say, if they're all bickering, I would just try to be leading the charge. Or sure. No, walk, I'm still, walk I'm ahead. still, I'm still moving there. I'm not stopping. No, they follow your wake. Out the door. Excuse I'm in me. the I'm in the back in the middle of this. I'm just not saying anything. <laughs> so we're not up now. Money. Uh, you guys go wandering off and go to see about finding Lead Boy. And Lead Boy is um, a uh, a company that I'd say all of you are familiar with because it's right beside a different caravan company. There's like a collection of stables that sort of cluster in the city. And you came in with a almost like a rival group, like a shop nearby, when you landed here 20 days ago on your original expedition. Now, as you go wandering through town, I'm going to make a brief luck roll for your group. Not one, Mr. Chow. <laughs> it isn't that one. It isn't that one. Oh, fuck. <laughs> wow, you had to say something. Oh, you don't roll on the table. You're rolling in real life. Yeah, normally yeah, there's a cam, so you can see what it is, uh, but I will have that uh, at the end of uh, the week off there, because I've got a bunch of stuff coming in. Like a... He's been discussing a fancy new setup for a Yeah, it's like a green oh, screen cool. and some other bullshit. I'm sorry coming. to interrupt. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all good, dude. Uh, while you are wandering along here, um, you can see that uh, the city is, is coming alive, and uh, now there's actually like a little bit of traffic on the roads. There's a few people that are wandering up and down, and you see like some merchants who are setting up shop and stuff like that. And as you guys are wandering along, uh, let's see here. Ah. Trent and Tessa. Both of you are talking here, and you notice that as a group of uh, people go walking by, one of them bumps into one of your party members here. It's Zakul, who's like kind of at the center of your group, and in a ever so delicate gesture, manages to lift from his person um, a, a small item, like out of one of his corner uh, pouches there. Zakul, what do you have on your person? As okay, far as so. uh, both like coin and like non-weapon or armor stuff. 
if it's not in my bag okay so i have a pelt belt pouch of coins how many coins do you have 33 gold pieces and five silver sure you guys see the main belt pouch from zakul get lifted right off of his person here and one of them actually uses like a dagger to make a really swift motion and it looks like he doesn't even notice and the two of you only really picked up on it being sort of at the tail end of the group and just looking at the right time how many people is it can i mage hand grab that well he sliced the coin bag yeah he cut a small piece of string that was keeping it attached to oh can i mage hand grab the bag oh sure okay uh and to answer your question trent you see it's a group of three people are they all pretty close together? Um, yeah, they're they're all within like you know a couple feet of one another. They look like a, I would, a bunch of humans, just kind of. I would like to here. cast grease underneath their feet. I did not notice this at all either. Right? Not at all. No. Uh, how do we know if he noticed it or not? I used your passive perception. You did not notice. Okay. okay. Uh, as they go wandering along here, I'd like you to make a dexterity check. Or you could do sleight of hand, Tessa. I'd also allow Arcana, if you wish. Oh, well, let's see which one's higher roll. <laughs> you said dexterity check, sleight of hand, or Arcana. Yeah, and to you, uh, Trent, huh. what's your DC? My DC is 13, I believe, because it's just 10 plus... Okay. That is a 13. Uh, but I'm the, the one who, uh, the one who got uh, the bat, the coin purse in his hand. I am gonna give him my seven portent roll for his oh. dice roll. So he still gets to add modifiers to it. So if he has a plus six, the deck saves. And what was your check there, Tessa? It was a thirteen sleight of hand. A thirteen. Okay. Let me check here. It's almost like something that you would see out of a play in, uh, like, the main portion of town, where a couple of theatrical performances sometimes are held. The three of them slip, almost as if in unison here. One of them, in fact, seems like he's going to be okay with it, and then just loses his balance um, at that last moment as they pass over a, a set of grease here. Now, they're kind of just behind your group, like, you know, maybe three or four feet away when you cast a spell and do this. And, uh... They're making an effort to move rather fast away from your group after bumping into Zakul. They all slip and fall, and in the air there, you watch as somebody's hand kind of like goes reaching for a coin purse, and instead, a spectral one grabs a hold of it, and Tessa, you nab onto the gold. And everyone would hear this. Bring it back to me and hand it to Zakul. I start giving ourselves a round of applause. (laughs) Nice snag, Tess. I just My turned and jobs. started laughing hysterically at these three tards that just fell down in the middle of the street in this mud. So cool, you see your coin purse somehow removed from your person, a, a cut piece of string there, and the thing levitates back to you, and you also see three people covered in dirt and grease quickly scrabbling around on the ground trying to get back to their feet, and they just go running off. Could, could I have got up to one? Could I have, could I have before he got up, like, helped one of them up with a hand? Mm. Sure, you do, but he, like, runs from you in terror and gets, quickly runs away. I would have tried to hold him and, like, offered him, like, like talk to him for a second. Oh, you want? Right. do you want to okay. grapple him? Because otherwise he's going to just try and get out. Yes. Pretty much the same for me, too. If, if I re- got a chance to, could I chase after them or try to grapple one? Sure, I'll say I, both I of you can make a grapple check while uh, Niche is, like, laughing his ass off at the front of the group. Yeah, I'm as they to... run away, I'm just going to be like, that shit doesn't book. come out of clothes. <laughs> wow. I rolled a three, so my guy's getting away. Okay. Uh, I'll roll for that first one. Uh, he also rolled a three? What's your, <laughs> what's your grapple check? <laughs> I, have, I have negative to it, so... Okay. Holy shit. Okay. Well, I rolled a 12 plus 4, so I have a 16. 16. The second one rolls a Oh, he nat once. Like you you reach over for him and as he tries to move, the motion of trying to get away from you causes him to slip in the grease again and he falls to the ground <laughs> and your hand just like you grab a hold of his clothes instantly. There's nowhere for him to go. And you you watch as I... he looks towards his buddies and they're just like they're gone. <laughs> I bring my face right up to him, nostrils like right near his eyeballs, stealing from a servant of Azun. Just stealing from the god himself. I hope you realize you've made a grave mistake today. He looks at you and he goes, Whoa, man, I, I didn't mean to start any trouble with the cleric or nothing. I mean, 
uh, it wasn't even me. It was, and then he like points over towards his friends, and like you, you can see they're not even there anymore. It's just like him alone in the streets. <laughs> no. guys. Calm this down. is the real young guy, right? Like, I'm not gonna like break his Sakul. arm. Sakul, but... Sakul, do you mind? He's like in his late teens. Sure, he looks like he could be anywhere from like uh, 16 to 20 years old, kind of thing. Young man, we all fall on hard times. It is best not to take it out on others. Here, this is for you. I'll give him like three gold coins, one for each of the guys, and uh, a flower. And I will oh. try to remember his face very well. Sure. What's your name, young man? Hey, uh... uh... It's okay. It's okay. It's not whisper. okay. He asked you a question. I'm going to whisper to Trent. Where does Burton get all the flowers? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding the guy by the scruff of his neck, though. By the way, like, he's oh my not, god, like a, not like a baby animal. animal. I like I put the flower cold. like in his ear, <laughs> and I hand him the coins, and I'm like, he he looks like he still really doesn't want to be here. But as you give him the coin, and he kind of like takes it, uh, there's like a little sort of quiver to his voice, and he's like, Taglar. Taglar. Well, I'm sorry this happened, Taglar. Um, hopefully in the future. You will not steal. It is not good. Now run along with your friends. Don't do it again, okay? Yeah. Uh, thanks. Really sorry. Do you let go I, I of him, so cool? Yeah, I release him and go, Paladin Merton, your compassion will, uh... <laughs> Bang will not end so well next someday. <laughs> yeah, he's just sorry he got caught. And that his the clothes top. are fucking ruined. He like slips right? again, falling to one of his knees, and then like quickly runs off and disappears into an alleyway nearby. I've seen strippers handle the grease better than you. <laughs> That's like the last thing that's said as he dips around and disappears. <laughs> oh, how, how well can I commit? <laughs> I I would say that you'll probably remember him pretty well, given that you spoke with him and. Uh... Like how much energy there was in the moment when you met him. Is that cool? For all the talk about young hatchlings, something like that makes you sound like one. You know, guys, our young hatchling, and I'll point to Trent, a little bit more broker than that one. Yeah, next time I need gold, I know who to steal it from. He'll just hand yeah, it right seriously. back to me. Well, we do appear to be in the middle of a, a job. Let us continue on. Thank you. Tessa for uh, returning the bag. Of course. Hey! Oh, right, Trent. I had, I had a part in that, too. Good job, Trent. Oh, that was you? <laughs> yeah, the grease. Ah, uh, I thought it was yes. just mud. No, oh, man, that's that's my shit. Which, which way do those three run off? I, I'd watch them until they're out of view. Uh, they ran towards the, uh, kind of like the center of town. You guys are ha uh, heading sort of sideways, whereas they ran towards the city walls where things are denser. Okay. Making a mental note. Yeah, Alright, well, uh, back on our way then, I suppose. <laughs> I like how he's, like, uh, reprimanding us for, like, being too mean to the kids. He's, like, planning to stalk and eat these kids later. <laughs> That's the best part. Oh my god, yes! Wait, that's what you're doing? That's exactly what I'm doing, yeah. Oh, oh my god, I forgot about that! Oh, oh my god, this? Dude, this oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm completely talk. expect to get this goal back later. So you guys go wandering through the streets and eventually get towards this area. It's got a very peculiar smell to it. Um, all the horses and everything in the area alert you before you even see the stables. And you notice a whole bunch of different caravan companies here, ranging from like small, fast couriers based out of little tiny stables to um, extravagant ones with uh, like multiple coaches linked together and like, you know, huge sets of horses and stuff like that. You also find Lead Boy nearby uh, and their characteristic sign outside. Can I use prestidigitation to perfume the air in front of me as we walk oh, yeah. forward? I'm gonna, we're both going to prestidigitation to perfume the air. Sure, it's not a perfect thing, but it's like... <laughs> horse better than flowers. Horse horse shit, horse shit, right? Flowers. <laughs> 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 it's better than nothing. Are you guys going in as you get over there? Yes, please. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> As you wander up to Lead Boy, you can see that the uh, there's like a main door there, a little stable that's uh, 
not a separate building, but kind of attached to this one with an awning uh, that goes over top and uh, like a whole bunch of animals in there that you can kind of hear and smell from outside. But stepping through the door, uh, things are quite different, and somebody else seems to have uh, made an effort to perfume the place as well. Trent, you notice there's like a bowl of like potpourri kind of over by the, oh, nice. the main bar and everything. Nice stuff. Uh, there's a whole bunch of pages. Uh, there's parchment all over the place that's been fixed up to the wall on a cork board with like a bunch of nails here and there. And you can see what looks to be a group of probably about three or four attendants that are kind of going back and forward, um, sometimes talking to each other, referencing data back and forth, things like that. But one of them, uh, who seems to be like a little bit better dressed than the others almost, they, they seem to be servile in their dress, while this person is much more like a, a butler or a, a server kind of thing, turns over towards you all and gives you a nod as you step into the room. Question, Alush. Yes. Have I partied with any of the uh, the page hands, like the, the, the servant? <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> Actually, go ahead. Make a luck roll for me. Oh, thank God. No offense, yeah, but your luck rolls are not very good. <laughs> yeah, my, my <laughs> diet's been pretty bad. You've been blowing money, right? Buying, like... <laughs> That's a 19 Ooh, luck roll. Okay. So... As you look over, um, yeah, you actually partied with two of them here. All of them are servant boys, uh, it seems, and two of them you've actually had a couple drinks with at uh, Ursa's Tavern before. They're, uh, they're both 14 years old and weren't supposed to be in the tavern, <laughs> but, um, you know, they kind of snuck in anyway, and they were impressed by your, your grease and uh, stripper technique that you had <laughs> oh my pioneered God. and everything. Um, my, they were uh, my shortly patented. kicked out afterwards, though, by Cal. I'll, uh, I'll like, pat Tess on the back here and mm -hmm. uh, slide over there. Not, like, trying to, like, be stealthy or anything, but, like, I want to, like, kind of, like, call out their name or something. Like, make it clear that I know them and go over to talk while, while uh, my party talks to the butler. Sure. Yeah, you can step over and talk to them if you want. Do, uh, do I know? Does this butler look like... His first appearance is, does he look like he would be someone who's hard to get information out of? He looks kind of stuck up, yeah. And okay. uh, the way he holds himself is very professional, which might be a nice thing. But he also looks like he's pretty tight-lipped, so yes. I will nod to him and then touch the cool and cast guidance on him and walk over to Trent. Ah. The power of the gods flows through you for a brief moment there, Zakul. And uh, it seems that Tessa has chosen you almost to uh, be the one to do the talking. <laughs> See, I was like, wait. <laughs> As a player, I was a little taken back because I was like, why am I getting guided? <laughs> At least I assume that's help what's going on here. Well, I've been going up uh, yeah. talking about See, the Brent's quest. Very, uh, very well spoken people. So cool, and I can go talk about the quest, I suppose. Maybe sure. Niche can come if he wants. Uh, yeah, I'll go. Your group sort of splits into three and two. Uh, Tessa and Trent, you're heading over to the servant boys while the three yeah. of you are going to talk to the butler, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna divvy you guys here for the sake of uh, see remembrance. So, there we go. So, uh, first things first, as you guys get over towards the counter, the butler looks over towards the three of you, and uh, he seems to take note that group has split, but doesn't really pay it too much attention, and uh, turns over towards the three and says, uh, departing, are we? Potentially. Uh, we're here to inquire about a young lady who may or may not be lost. She set out about seven or eight days ago. Her name is Benevolence. We've been sent to find her because she hasn't returned home. Could you help us with this? I see. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I can't give you that record. Um, you see, we, we keep those things rather uh, tight around here. Um, plus, it would be quite a bit of paperwork to track down such a thing. Am I close uh, enough to hear the butler and if he's giving them a hard time? I would say no, up. because at this yeah, point, okay. the servant boys have swarmed the both of you in the corner <laughs> of the room there okay. and like run over. And uh, one of them seems to have picked up a bad habit, immediately referring to you the same way that Trent does. And oh, I was like, fuck. oh, T Money, how's it going? And hey. uh, the other dude. one runs over towards uh, Trent and is like, hey, 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 how you been, dude? Hey guys, what's up? Remember that sick ass song T Money was playing when you guys came to the bar? T. 
And then they both look at each other and like, oh, that flute shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, guys, I got I got a question for you. And uh, if you think you can help me, I'll uh, I'll like look over at the uh, the butler. And is he is he like looking at us or does he have his back towards us? No, it looks like he's pretty involved with the other three and is almost like too distracted to notice you guys in the corner. I'll like, you know, like sketchy watch salesman flip open like my robe here and pull out one of my flasks of liquor that I've made. Mm. And I'll okay. kind of like shake it back and forth and like uncork it a little bit so sure. they could get a scent that it's alcohol. Oh. And then like slide it back in. Ooh, ooh. And they, can they I both quickly pocket this it. Is like even a decent thing of alcohol or is it like shitty like the shittiest alcohol you can find uh it's his own personal stuff i'd like you to make a stealth check though to slip this over to them sure Ooh. <laughs> that's Ooh. a nat 20. okay and i think i have a positive modifier to stealth Ooh. Okay. Uh, one of them quickly, you know, pockets this thing and uh, kind of, you know, gives you like a smile and whatnot. And he says, oh, I'm going to my book to record. I swear, like half of the taverns around here don't even let us in, you know. Maybe we can just party yeah. out in the streets tonight. And he kind of like pats the uh, the bottle there. He goes like, you guys going to be around? Might be. Um, it depends really on what you can tell us about uh, caravan that left here like seven days ago. Do you guys know Benevolence, the beefling? She's pretty, pretty cute. Mid twenties, maybe. Giant horns. Really big horns, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, um, they immediately seem to light up when you say that, uh, Tessa. I'm gonna and um, look to my book and wave it open. The book uh, quickly comes alight, and the, the two of them look like they're kind of in thought. They're they're rubbing like you know the collective five brain cells that they own together and, and trying to come <laughs> up with something here, and. Uh, while this is happening, over towards the uh, um, the butler, the three of you here have just been informed that getting this record would be too much trouble. What do you guys want to do? Well, mm, is this unfortunate? A human? Yes, it's a human man standing in front of you. Okay, it looks like so he's probably I... at his like thirties or something. He's got a bald head there and a little curled mustache. Sure, so I'll lean forward. Perhaps you should rethink such archaic policy. This is a dangerous world for a young tiefling woman disappearing, or rather, a human male disappearing. She's quite a good friend of ours. Um, I'm trying to intimidate her. She didn't return home. He says, Are you with the guard? Of course we are. I'd like you to make a deception check, please, Merton. That's my sweet spot, baby. <laughs> Uh, that's why I'm, 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 I was waiting for someone to actually commit to the lie. <laughs> 17. 17. Oh. Okay, let me see what he gets here. Okay. Hmm. He looks over towards a stack of papers nearby and then looks back and he says, I can assure you that all of our expeditions have come back safely. If this friend of yours was meaning to go somewhere, then she has gotten to her destination. She was feel like supposed he's the to truth? return. I'd like you to make an insight check, please, Nitch. Oh shit, I'm sitting here trying to do it on roll 20, realizing that's not a fucking thing. <laughs> roll real dice. Oh shit! Ooh, pretty good. Not bad. Uh, 16 plus uh, insight is 1, 17. Uh, you know for a fact uh, that he's telling the truth. His face betrays that this is absolutely the case. He's not lying. However, you can also tell that he's not telling you as much as he knows. So he's, so he's lying by omission? Kind of, yeah. He, you can tell that you, there's some info he's kept back, but you don't know what it is. Like, it, it might be a big omission, it might be pretty mundane, but there's something that he's not telling you guys. But he hasn't lied to you in what he's said. Well, well, human. Uh, well, uh, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, well, you know, it's prudent that we follow up on our reports. Who was, who was helming that uh, that caravan that went out? We will need to at least touch base with him one time. Hmm. 
Very well. A moment, please. Thank you. Take your time. He turns and goes towards a door at the back end of the room, and while he gets over to the door, he puts his hand, like, onto the handle, and uh, he just looks over towards the servant boys who seem to be with Tessa and Trent, and he goes, No slacking. I'll be right back. You're on desk. And he points at one of them. Can I go right over that stack of papers in the... <laughs> I was gonna. I look. I look towards the cool, and I just say. I just say, like, without even saying it, but mouth. That worked. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. Like, as soon as he's had an eye shot, like, it, really? Okay. It appears so. And I'll stand by the door to see if I can hear uh, the guy returning sure. while uh, Paladin uh-huh. Martin looks through the paper. Back over in the corner, you're not sure if it's related or not, but the one servant boy that you aren't familiar with seems to have been the one chosen to go over to the desk. Perhaps these uh, these two that you're speaking to are uh, <laughs> seen as some slackers around here, or mis- miscreants, perhaps. Miscreants. But uh, he goes over there and leaves you with the other two, and it seems that the, the butler has kind of gone past the door at this point. And before we get to the stack of papers... Uh, what did you just ask them, Trent? You asked about the uh, the caravan that left seven days ago. Yeah, I asked what I asked what they could tell me in exchange for that uh, flask of liquor. What they right. could tell me about. Uh, they they both kind of look at each other and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, we were there that day." And then uh, <sighs> mm. do I get the sense that one of them is trying to remember something? Yeah, you do. I would like to use my other port and roll to give him a twelve on his <laughs> uh, his history check here because I have no I have no faith in these kids. Right? Yeah, they're they're both there and they're trying to think. And uh, you know, you use um, this this roll here. You you had divined this um, previously, like early in the morning. You knew that this would go this way, and uh, it's kind of an odd feeling watching things that you've basically seen in visions just kind of happen in front of you and the guy turns towards you and he mouths the words that you're expecting he says i don't remember but i know where the paper is oh that would be show us the paper and he looks over and he goes it's in the other room well take me are we not allowed in there no that's well we can't because we're you know employees but you know boss just kind of went in there so i mean well, um, I think my friends might have asked for the paper, too. So if if you see the boss come out, if it's not the right paper, I'll, like, look around. Is there, like, something he could, like, accidentally knock over purposefully? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's, there, like, like, a, a little, room or something? There's a uh, ceramic cup nearby with a couple of flowers in it. If, uh, you know, if you, if you think that he's trying to to fool us if he brings out a fake paper or something uh knock over that that flowers for me are you crazy trent i'll get fired if i do that i'll give you each a piece of sil- a piece of gold <sighs> my dad's um, gonna beat my ass if that happens do, do you know how many places i've had to go <sighs> here here i want to help you dude and like i'll i'll take out uh my completely empty coin purse and I'll hand it to him and I'll say if it's if it's a fake drop this on the ground oh okay all right all right and he nods to you <laughs> and I'll kind of like look at him and then like look over by the door and I'll be like probably get to where you can see the paper I'm like tilt my head over by the door <laughs> I would like you to make an investigation check please over by the bar uh, Merton oh, shit should have left to someone else <laughs> what guide if, if this um Ten. the other Ten. servant boy comes over and starts bothering him I'm gonna like basically like tell him to stand down right so at this point your group is sort of spread out to give you an idea here I'll uh, I'll actually draw the room and you guys can place yourselves how you think that you would be i didn't hear him say that the right paper was in the room right they were too far so that would be important there's like a little door here to the outside and there's a bar right here kind of and he had made his way into a little room 
past the door over here. The servants are kind of in this corner. Uh, I'll, uh, at this point, I'll kind of, like, look over at Merton, and I'll be like, Merton? Psst, hey! Hmm? It's not there. Huh? I'll just try to get a read on what he's trying to tell me. Not here. <laughs> I'm just going to walk over at Merton. He says it's not in this pile. Where is it? Apparently it's in that room that the guy just went in. So, this is behind the bar, so you guys would probably be oh. on the other side. Just so I'm going to explain to them what Trent's plan was. He'd be like, just keep a hush about it. And I'll walk back over to the servant so it doesn't look like I actually like, did anything. Sure. So, you three are clustered over here, and Merton, you're actually pretty close to the bar and have checked out what's going on there. Well, so cool. you're kind of by the door back here, weren't you, to listen in? Yeah. Okay. So, the servant boy gets here in time to kind of stop you from looking around too much, but you do get a quick glance, and you rolled, what, a 10? 10. There are too many papers here to really make sense of anything, and the accounts that are written out, the shorthand and everything is just overwhelming. You're like, okay, I see a lot of stuff, but I don't see benevolence written anywhere or anything like that. It's you don't you come away from it seeing nothing. And then when the when servant the... boy gets over, he sees you kind of like looking at the the pages and everything. He says, uh, "Can I can I help you?" No. And when I hear, <laughs> and when I hear that the papers are in the room, I'd like to readjust to over here to glance in the room when the door is open. Mm. Okay, clever. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> the door opens back up, and you see the butler come back in. Servant boy quickly kind of like shuffles to another part, like he doesn't really want to be directly next to him. And... As he comes out, seeing you by the door there, so cool. he just steps right up to you immediately, and he says, uh, Well, um, the driver, uh, we like to keep confidential. He's requested to keep his name off the record, but what I can tell you is that there was a return trip scheduled, and... Your friend did not make it back. This is not what you just said a few moments ago. All your uh, patrons and drivers have made it back. I said that the expedition groups had made it back. As far as passengers go, uh, that seems to be another story. Well, may we see the sheet to confirm this? Uh, we have reports to make after all. Uh, no, you may not, but if you have other information that you need, I will uh, happily give it to you. Um, well, that is the information that we need. <clears throat> That's unfortunate. I mean, we can return here with more of the guard and a warrant for this, or you could maybe understand that Benevolence is a prominent figure in this area. I mean, knowing that the Leaden Boy caravan service doesn't care about its passengers can't be good for business can it <sighs> I'm just saying I mean it, if word were to get out then it will when we return with our warrant uh, we're just trying to make this simple I don't feel like having to walk around town to get all this stuff uh, just just put me in the right direction we did exactly as we were paid to do it seems, according to the record, that your friend was going to the ruins of Misty Town and was to be picked up shortly after, and did not come back to be picked up. We waited for the allotted time, and eventually the expedition crew came back empty-handed. There's nobody to, uh... <sighs> There's nothing else to really report. That's the Can gist we, of uh, insight check this? Ah! If anyone wishes to insight check, please do so. Can I, I wish to check get the a butler because of... he's a douchebag? Sure. Sweet. How, is this building, is this the whole building, this room we're looking at? Mm -mm. The The complex is like two or three times larger. This is just the room you're in. Is this over here, uh, like outside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the street would be on this side right here, kind of. Hmm. 
Uh, all this stress. Need some fresh air. Excuse me. Um, instead of inciting him, can I, uh, can I whisper something to one of these, uh, homies over here? Sure. Um, they didn't drop the purse, right? Because he didn't bring anything out. No, he's still, like, kind of holding it sort of to his side. And you can see that the butler has some papers in his hand, and they might be the real ones. Or your friend is retarded, one of the two. <laughs> I'll, um... I'll, like, kind of lean down and whisper in his ear. Uh, I got another flask for you guys, if you can get those papers for us. We're staying over at Ursa's. And I'll be like... No, Cal's gonna oh. kick... I don't think we can go back there, Trent. Alright. Well, uh, thanks for your help. It was good okay. seeing you guys again. They, uh, they both kind of give They out of trouble, you two. <laughs> and I'll wing. And then they're them. like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, they, they try to play along with your ploy. The butler doesn't look <laughs> impressed. I kind of turn back towards the butler. I'm like, I don't know how you put up with them all day. And then I'll turn and walk out after, uh, Merton. Did we get oh, anything from I would be gone, time? hopefully. With the 16 there, uh, I would say that both Nitch and Tessa, you would be aware that he's telling the truth here. Oh. But you're also very aware that he wants you out of his shop, and he's getting pretty irate with you. And to, almost mm -hmm. to punctuate this feeling that lingers in the air, after seeing Merton step out and uh, seeing what Trent said to the two servant boys and everything, he turns over to you, Zakul, and he says, uh, Peculiar guardsman. We'll kill you. Oh, I will follow Trent out. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look bad at all. Huh? Uh, okay, oh. so you go stepping outside, and uh, you find you know Trent kind of out past the door there. Meanwhile, inside, um, the butler's still holding the papers, and he says, I won't relinquish these to you. I trust that's enough information. It, it may be. We may also be back. What time does your establishment close this evening? We're open throughout the evening. I may be off shift, but I assure you that Lead Boy is open every hour of the day. Well, I'd like to speak with you in particular since we've already have our relationship. When are you off your shift? Wait, did he have the papers in his hand? Yes. Oh, oh. I would have done something told different. But you had already stepped out by that mm -hmm. point, right? Yeah. Well, well, if I saw, saw the, papers the papers in his hand, I thought he didn't have the papers. Yeah, he's like sneaking around to go around the back of the building and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, because I didn't know would he had the papers. you have stayed in the room? I definitely would have. Sure, you can place yourself in there. Oh, I would have walked outside. Yeah, I'm I still going uh, out. I, I've done everything I can here. He steps over to this end of the bar here and motions the servant boy to kind of step aside and he looks towards you, Nitch. And he says, uh, what was your name again, guardsman? What was on that manifest again? What's his name? I forgot. Out of character. Manifest? Sorry? What was? What is the butler's name? We did not oh, know. he hasn't told you. Nor does he wear anything like a name tag or anything like that. Hmm. I just... I, I ask him back for his name. Well, what is your name? I will need to file it for my report. Get out of my shop. Hmm. We'll be back. And I'll turn and walk away. Come along. I'll be there in a moment. Yeah, as you will. My but friend, I'm... Cool. Do you stay when this happens? I'm staying. Like, I'm kind of eyeing him down. I'm squinting. Sorry, the voice... I forgot to turn that off. That's all good. He looks at, uh, over towards you, Zakul, and then looks over towards you, Merton. Says, I'll address. Told you I'll address him. All I intend to get out. I understand that. Uh, I just came to apologize, and I'd like to cast Charm Person on him. Ooh. I would like to know what the DC is. Thirteen. He passes the save. Mm. 
That makes him aware that you try to charm him, right? Uh, I would say in this instance, he's he's paying pretty close attention to that kind of thing. So I'll let you make a stealth roll, Merton, but you're going to have to roll super high in order to get away with this. Uh, 16? Yeah. Yeah, he kind of like blinks for a second and he goes, what? Sorry? Oh, I just wanted to apologize for the trouble. Uh, you were very helpful. Thank you. It looks almost like he didn't fully understand that, and he still looks irate, but he just kind of gives you, like, an uneasy nod. Okay. I'll nod and turn and leave. Sure. I follow him out without saying anything else. Okay. Eventually, you guys find your way outside with the rest of the group there, out on the dirt street. Well, at least we got the name of their destination. You guys know anything about that? Uh, as long as he was telling the truth about the destination, we don't need to stay here any longer. Um, would have been nice to get some more information, but the ruins of Misty Town are good enough, I think, for a starting point. We know Maybe about so this place? Ah. If you look on the map, you are keenly aware of this place. It is... If you're traveling on foot, roughly about... Three days ish, maybe four, from Hillcrest. And it's through the wilderness as most of the roads in that area have decayed. We best get back to Cal uh, before his, uh, you know, gets busy, it's still morning, and let him know we'll be gone for about a 10 day, potentially longer. Yes. Hold on. I'll wave my book to stop recording. I think uh, I might remain here for a while longer. Don't leave without me. Guy seems oh. pretty fond of you. What are you gonna do, Nick? Jump him when he's all shift? Yeah, I'll give him an eyebrow raise, like... Mm. Got something up your sleeve there. Well, I just thought another conversation might be prudent a few hours from now. I don't have to. Anything we but... should know? Just a conversation or a conversation? <laughs> I could help with such a conversation as well. Can you stay quiet and stick flexing, to the shadows? Flexing my, like, six-foot frame. <laughs> You're not sure what conversation he means exactly, but Sakul flexes his golden dragonborn muscles, like, rippling underneath the scales there. Uh, and uh, you picture just kind of, like, the frail butler being put against that, and it would not be a, a pretty sight. We will go to a brief five- or ten-minute break. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all some scary motherfuckers. <laughs> I wanted to intimidate the guy, but like I was like, all right, well, I'm, I'm like a tiefling disappeared. You could also make a human butler disappear, and I was like, can I roll intimidate? And then it was just like chase the deception and something else. And I was like, oh, I wasn't trying to interrupt. Never mind. You. I'm sorry. It, well, it kind of like he didn't really acknowledge it. Yeah. And the conversation kept going, so I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Like, yeah, I, don't I was know. like, okay, well done. So I just kind of <laughs> Intimidation went with it and I, is like, a very risky thing. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. risky. That's it is. I kind of, but I, but that's the guy is. Let it, go. <laughs> it is, but my intimidation thing is like extremely high. I was oh, like, well, unless I do. I get like a plus five to it. Well, that's solid. I mean, well, I don't have pluses to anything I do. Like, if I do good, like, role play, do I get like advantage or anything? Or like, is that bullshit now? You definitely do. Sometimes you don't even have to roll. Okay. If, like, if you really have someone by the balls, you'll just auto-succeed. But uh, I'm going to go grab something. I'll be right back. We'll start in about uh, ten minutes from now. Okay, so uh, hit up the bathroom if you need to. Do all your stuff. Get some food or whatever. Yeah, I'll be back in a sec. I mean, yeah, I look like a weirdo, but I'm also a charismatic paladin. So my, like, persuasion are you, uh, and my stuff's pretty high. So are you sneaky? No, I'm not sneaky at all. I wear uh, heavy armor. I, and no I might prefer to uh, not be with you if I'm doing. I'm I'm very sneaky. Doing sneaky things. If you're sneaky, Merton, it would be useful. I'm very sneaky. That is fine. If only Jim would have saved that seven for that uh, charm person, could have been out it's, of there. Just picture me as like the very very big guy in the group. I, we I got we got good info picture. though. I don't we, know how much gold that uh, that. 
our uh, dragonborn friend here has, but we're only doing a quest for 25, so I figured better not lose whatever he has because it might oh, be no, more than good. we're going to get. Yeah, that, that was good, good grease. I was like, oh, oh that's true. Use it on the grease. That's right. I was yeah. gonna like. I just used command. a twelve because like it's a twelve. What am I gonna do with a fucking twelve? And it, I it was did gonna help. like. Uh, I knew where the paper was. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna command that thief to like halt. Uh, if uh, nothing else happened. And then you gave him gold. So you went from commanding him to halt to giving him gold. Oh, I'll be getting. You know. I'll what be getting you know. it back. He's, he's getting to it back. Eat him this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know. I forgot about that completely. Your character picture and portrait is so I'm an undead rapey stalker guy. Not <laughs> hilarious. You're like a little jovial cuck boy. Well, if it looked like an undead rapey stalker guy, it wouldn't, wouldn't be very good. I thought good you'd have like slicked brown hair, you know, be like Tricky Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky fucking Dicky, the one hit wonder. <laughs> I did want to make him look as uh, happy as possible. If he looked like an evil badass, it wouldn't. Well, there's quite, seven uh... people watching us play Skyfall right now. Woo! I'm one of them. I'm also one of them. So there's I'm like here. two. Usually people. it's some of the other players. Uh, once in a while, we get like a yeah. new person off Reddit. He was rolling bad for all the saves up until that most important one. Now, how do we get cameras in so you can see my face when I'm fucking up? And you can see me. <laughs> yeah, he, hasn't have, he hasn't implemented that. I would totally do a face cam. I, I yeah. have the webcam. I would totally. I think it'd be a lot of fun, actually. Like we should. Oh, like we. Just never again, like our drunken D and D night. That's all I ask. Cause you were all on webcam for that. That was glorious. Oh, was I forgot painful. about this. It's great. <laughs> that was so painful. I mean, don't drink more than you should. You guys were like, "Hey, you're not gonna finish that." I'm like, "Well, motherfuckers." I didn't. The whole, the whole I reason good. we shot. We put you in a catch-22 where you're a pussy if you don't, and you're fucked up if you do. You have to have the frame of mind to be, no, I don't give Jason. a fuck. <laughs> I am aware. I'm sorry it was you. Actually, you told me no, sorry it was Koala fun. was worse. Koala, I, I was so worried after you guys told me what Koala did. Oh, man. Koala was did? like... Didn't Koala chug his handle? He continued to chug the handle after the session, and then we invited a bunch of other people in, and at the end of the night, before I went to bed, Koala was, like, laying down on his floor with a headset, and we couldn't see <laughs> oh, him. Oh, I remember that. Oh, my God, I came in. A I came in after that, and he was fucked. Koala was, like, super twisted. Poor Koala Bear. We do have to have another drinking night at the end. That was so fun. I mean, we don't get anything done in our sessions as is. A Jimmy but that's okay. But that's I have okay. fun. I have fun. I love like, our as session. long as everyone else is having fun. I absolutely love our Friday. I was a dick last session, and I've made concessions and apologized. Wait, at the end of the session, I wasn't angry. You guys are arguing. It just sounded like you guys are actually upset. Oh no! I think I overstepped. I, I think I overstepped. I thought it was in good fun, and and I realized now that even though it was fun for me, maybe it was not for others. So. No, I think you and Saul are fun. I just seriously thought you guys were at each other, so I didn't think you know you were joking. That's the only reason I said anything. I think he was upset with how I was doing things. No, he, he wanted said, to. Oh. He wanted. I feel like Sloth wanted to ride off into the sunset, and I just was not. <laughs> right I was. I, I absolutely <laughs> unequivocally refused, like a dickwad. <laughs> there is a tomb. There's an ancient artifact in the basement. I did. I that. did try to. I did try to fuck him about three times, really hard. Yeah, it's cool. I got a. I got a baby dragon. I'm good with it. Yeah, just you so, got your magical item. I just so everybody item. knows, I have 14 hit points. <laughs> oh, one more than that him? is one more. How do you only have one more than me? Oh, because you don't Cause, have... Because I just took the average of the next one. So I took nine for base part, and then I took the average for the 
cleric hit dice. Oh man. That should have been yeah, 56. Six. Right, yeah. We a bunch of squishy. No, I'm fine. Don't worry. I'll heal myself. Things will be okay. And then we fight orcs. And somebody crits with D12s. And it's like, well. Wow. I'll it was die good after playing one with hit. you guys. <laughs> Just die after one hit. I wasn't meant to live anyway. It's fine. Jim, did you ever ask if you can save your divination things for death saves? Oh, no. I should ask him that. <laughs> Oh, would you allow that in my, my wizard on Sundays, Jimmy? Yeah, you can divination for any d20 roll. I'm sad I didn't use my nat 20 divination roll last, last I really session. want to play a divination, like, fighter and just fuck people over with my shit rolls. That's what I did last session. Will, that's Will what I do my really, rolls. Will has a really cool halfling character with lucky and halfling luck and divination wizard where he just fucks with all the dice rolls. What, was that cool in quotation marks? Not uh, cool for the DM, <laughs> but cool for everyone else. It's cool because it's like interesting that his whole character concept has nothing to do with like actual gameplay, but more with gameplay mechanics. It's like the the fourth wall breaking character. Is Illusion back? I thought I heard noise from him. Mm-hmm. I have returned. Uh, I I uh, how it doesn't affect today anymore obviously but uh i was talking to will about uh stuff before and um would you allow the portin rolls to be used for death saving throws hmm. yeah yeah i'd probably allow that Whew. there's some stuff it... that i would do on my side of the... <laughs> as will size <sighs> really <laughs> There's some things that I would do on my side of the table that I wouldn't allow it for, like uh, maybe like injury checks and stuff like that. But sure. uh, but for death saves, I'd, I'd probably at least run with it. And if it feels like oh this is fucking gay, then then I would uh, revert it's, back to the not. It's that. more it's more a safety net because we can't heal Will. So if I have like an eleven or twelve, I can just throw towards one of his saving throws. Mm -hmm. Getting two saves versus three fails is a lot better than having to go three or three yeah for sure yeah I, I would definitely run with it and see how it goes and then if it turns out to be garbage then we can revert back save those nat 20s baby <laughs> yeah right you wish. <laughs> you're using that for other shit for sure i'm using that for uh that's the oh i'm getting we have pussy a, today yes. do we have, <laughs> do we have like an actual paladin in the party <laughs> z are you actually a paladin mm-hmm I'd like to put my nat one in for Will's death save. Fuck you, Will. <laughs> no! <Yeah>, that... <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting I'm sick not... of having an undead in the party, so uh, <laughs> nat one on Will's second death save, please. So, peace out, kiddo. <laughs> Are we all good to go here? <laughs> Are we, uh, I think I hear everyone I chase you back. Yeah. Yeah, I'm back. Sweet. Yeah, we're good. Let's start back up, then. go so welcome back everybody uh you are currently outside of the shop and headed back to cal's it's still early in the morning though some time has passed and uh, you guys go romping through the streets are you making any detours or heading right over there no detours uh, needed for me yeah, i would I have, uh if i, have I no see, money so if i see like a like you know local on the street or like a vendor i'd I'd ask if they hear any rumors about Lead Boy Company. Oh, interesting. There's definitely people on the street. Um, you, you can Maybe see everything cart from... Cartman or someone who gets around a lot. Cartman. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. There appears to be nearby... Let's roll some luck for you, because my luck rolls have been great. Actually, go ahead and make your own luck roll before I give you another <laughs> I fucking like, one. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's an at 20 Oh, hey, there, yeah. I can guarantee you I wasn't going to get you one of those. <laughs> um, I have two ones and no 20s. Uh, let's see here. While wandering through the streets, um, you know, this part of town isn't exactly well paved. It's kind of like a muddy area, and uh, it seems to have rained a bit last night, so, you know, things are kind of gross. There's a caravan nearby, 
it's like a single um, coach that could probably hold anywhere from like one to four people maybe with two horses in front of it and somebody seated up at the top who's currently smoking a pipe and uh, seems to be staring at a house, um, maybe waiting for somebody to finally come out and catch their cab. You recognize this person as being one of the uh, few friends that you've made in the town since having been here in Hillcrest. Uh, do I know his name? You, d you do, yeah. He, he's come over to the tavern before. He goes by... Uh, he goes by Charlie, actually. Charlie! Yeah. Hey! And, uh, I would say that Charlie is um, kind of like a, a kindred spirit in a weird way. He's kind of like, you know, he's um, adventure-loving, and uh, if you give him, like, something new to do, and he has the time at least, he's like, oh, hell yeah, let's, let's go give that a shot. And uh, the two of you have spent a lot of time in the bar talking about your stories, and he seems to be pretty keenly interested in them. When you call over to him, um, Charlie turns towards you and, uh, you know, immediately pulls the pipe from his mouth there and goes, Hey, Tessa, how's it going? Good, good. I'm going to wave my book to record. I just have a, I have a peculiar question for you. Yeah, what's up? So, you know the caravan company, Lead Boy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did some work with them uh, a few years back. Yeah, um, they're, they seem to be a little stiff with us when we're trying to get some information on our missing friend. Benevolence, from the bar, you know? Mm. She that big, girl? Big tiefling horns? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I remember. Yeah. I haven't talked to her much, but I see her there sometimes. What's up? Yeah, she took a job with them, and apparently she never came back with them, and they refused to help us out, and we're just worried for our friend. You think, uh, you heard anything about that company? They good on their word? They always paid me. I mean, back when I was driving for them, there weren't any problems. I, uh, I split because I got a better, a better offer somewhere else. Oh. I'm gonna look to my party and see if they heard any of that. Sure, if you guys would follow, like, in Tessa's wake, you would have heard all this. Certainly. Yeah, I'm just hanging out. Do I know Charlie? Uh, I would say that he's a familiar face, for sure. Do I, and, uh, do I know his name, more importantly? Uh, make a history roll. Probably hangs out with Tessa more than uh, he hangs out with the rest of your group. Uh, 8 plus 5, I think? Oh, yeah, yeah your memory's but... alright. Uh, you, re you remember his name's Charlie. He seems to hang out with Tessa. Uh, you don't know exactly what the relationship is, but uh, during evenings at the bar, they chill for a long time. What's up, Chuck? He looks over and he goes, uh... <laughs> oh, hey! Um... You know, you know Trent. Trent. Right, yeah. How you doing, Trent? Hey, guys. He kind of, like, waves towards the rest of you. Good to see you. I grunt at the hatchling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He looks over and he goes, uh... Dragonborn. Um, what do you guys... What do you guys need? Well, I think Tessa was just asking, right? Uh, I mean, mainly we need to get to Misty Town. Uh, so you have a caravan here, but we could always walk. Look, take it from me. Um, if you're going, if you're going down south from here through the forest, I mean, if you have the money, I'd probably just take a boat. Boat's the way to go. Faster, less danger. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, if the weather's good, at least. How much do uh, one of those run usually? For like five people. So <sighs> trip down to Misty Town, so like a couple days away. Uh probably not too much. I mean if you don't mind taking the uh you know, the commoner accommodations, maybe uh maybe a few silver. Hmm. Very good deal. I think we'll do that. I look at everyone else for like You got any uh you seem to be in in the biz, as they say. You got any friends that uh, run boats? Uh, no, not much? really. I mean, I'd offer to help and, uh, you know, cart you guys over there myself, but I'm pretty booked up. Won't even be over at the tavern for a long time. Probably going to be out of town for a while. I see you're waiting well, on somebody here. Yeah, a uh, couple of nobles doing some business there. Just wanted someone to ferry them around. Nobles, you say? Yep. Hmm. You happen to know, uh, I, I don't want to pry or anything. 
Um, question, Illusion. Does Charlie seem like the kind of guy that I think my uh, my writ would pass? Your writ with? would pass? What do you mean? You know, my, my writ... Remember Will did the... the oh, th your fake forgery, thing. And it... You said it would pass for, like, commoners, but it wouldn't get by with, like, guards or nobles. Yeah, make an insight check. Oh, God, my insight check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a plus two. Just not proficient. Oh uh, that's God. 20 insight. You're rolling straight I am rolling fire so today. Well. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, the orange dice, dude. You think that Charlie would probably know that it's fake, and just from the kind of work that he does, he seems like he's a pretty sharp tack. I'll, um... <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> so, before we part ways here, I definitely want to uh, ask Charlie what about the forest is dangerous, and th does he know anything about what actually is in the ruins of Misty Town? Oh, sure. So how would you ask that to him? Young Hatchling. What is so dangerous in the southern roads that we should uh, sail about in a roundabout fashion? Well, there's your average stuff, you know, bandits, hyprex beasts, giant animals, all that I, stuff. I, I, hyprex beasts, right? Yeah, the, the hair there's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, they kind of move around in, in packs and stuff, and... Uh, they keep to the forest, so if you have to go through those woods, it's bad mm -hmm. chances, right? Why don't we take the boat option? Yeah, I, I agree. I uh, I don't really know what's in the ruins, though. I mean, it's a whole town, right? It's a pretty big place. There could be anything. And you've heard people generally avoid it. Well. I mean, I've I've known of people going to look over there. It's a kind of an attraction in a way, right? Um, sometimes ships will stop off there as a place to rest on the way over, but you never know what's going to be in there, right? It could be uh, banded hideouts or uh, things forgotten in the town, that kind of thing. Pretty safe to say most of it's been picked through then, right? I hope so. By now, the thing's ancient. It's, it's mostly just rubble at this point. I've been by there before. You know, boat. It just looks like a bunch of. It's like the skeleton of a town, you know. When he says the word skeleton, I'll kind of like get a little closer and be like, "Funny you should say skeleton. Is there anything uh, spooky about it?" Ghost he narrows story? his eyes and he's just like. Trent, what are you? I'm looking for adventure, man, okay? I've been cooped up in this town for too long. I'm gonna Trent. take that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Charlie. I'll see you tonight at the tavern. We'll, uh... Well, like I said, I'm booked up, actually, but I'll catch you when I can. Yeah, I'll... Oh, shit. And he, he, yeah. he looks over for a second, and you see the door open, and he just kind of looks back towards you and he goes, uh, Hey, I gotta go. When the, uh, when the nobles come out, I'm, like, noticeably, like, ducking behind somebody. I'm, like, trying to, like, obscure my face. Sure. Yeah, the door opens, and you see what looks like two guards step outside, and then, like, a couple of incredibly dressed um, people. It looks like a couple, actually. There's a, a guy and a lady uh, holding on his hand, oh. and they have a retinue oh. of, like, six guards around them who are decked out, like blades and bows and the the whole nine yards uh, i'll bow to him and I'll, my apologies and i'll play them a short little tune with my flute and head on my way like because i'm not trying to get charlie in trouble right yeah when you pull out your flute he's just like eh, 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 and like kind of motions for you to get out of there is that who charlie is caravanning yep oh i just gained interest in this kid. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys step away from the uh the little coach yeah, yeah, I started walking away. Okay. Definitely. You guys walk away and uh, have gotten a little bit of info from Charlie about uh, Lead Boy. It seems that his opinion of them is fine. Hey, Merton. I'm going to turn my <laughs> book off. Yes. Buddy. Mm -hmm. What you doing on the ground there? 
I I thought I dropped something, uh, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's right here. Right, right. No, uh, you know why I dropped down here, man. I can't yeah, be seen by nobles. I know. Hey, uh, speaking of that, how much money do you think you need to uh, to make another crack at my, uh, my papers? Because I really wanted to ask what the name of that family was. I do have some contacts out here, and I know you're looking for information about a certain house, so... Um, do you? Think, do I know that? I thought that's why... I thought your character had told me you were interested in stories about... Oh, I thought it was more have, of like uh, a he is interested, but won't let on but to But he hasn't said? Oh, okay, never mind. Then I, I would like... Have that part. I would be like, uh... What's that, that funny family name you said? Like, something, uh, Lightning Cock or something? Yeah, the old, <laughs> like... I would have brought it up in, like, casual conversation, not been like, I need to kill. Right, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll be like, um... You know, uh, I do have some contacts that I can trust, but can't really go around with fake papers. How, how much would it like... cost to do it right? I would say that to do it right, to make a good forgery like that, uh, you actually know um, because you've you've spoken to that fence in town, and he has the supplies that you need. There's a couple of uh, like sigils and stamps, which are really hard to get a hold of, as well as the type of paper. You think you can create this for your friend here, but it's going to cost you thirty gold to do so. It'll take a lot of skill as well, but you have that under your belt. Well, Trench, for you? Oh, the materials... 800. <laughs> good good paper, you need this. Gonna take some time. 30, 35 gold, probably. Take. 35, okay. Um, Did I hear tree 50? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Attack. Well, um... I'll look into it, and um, perhaps you could pay me back down the road. I mean, uh, I assume I'm gonna have to go shopping for the uh, things anyway. So, yeah, when you get the I gold. Would... Pay it to me when you get it, and I'll you'll have it soon enough. Okay, I actually think I might swing by the general store if you guys are good with going back to Ursus without me. What are you gonna get there? The... Uh, you know, I'm you actually won't buy going to pawn some stuff. Um, what are you, what are you gonna try, not, try not go with you. Uh, I got this, and I kind of, uh, like, look left and right to make sure that nobody's, like, watching. And uh, when I think it's clear, I'll, uh... There's a homeless I'll, like, man watching you from across the road. That's fine. I just don't want... <laughs> I don't want any thieves to see that I have, like, a whole set of, like, folded up and, like, pressed, nice, dress fine clothes in here. Big mistake. Do I? Does he have anything that I think is worth thirty-five gold? Are these nobles' oh. clothing? This is yeah. This is like the the oh. handbook fine clothes. Yeah, I don't know how that much that could potentially worth. be worth a good amount. I'd like you to make a luck roll here while I look for some stuff. For for him or me? Yeah, you uh, for, for for him. Hey, uh, hey, Merton. Yeah. Hello. Did you uh? Did you want to stick out Leadenhall with me or Lead Lead Boy, Leadenhall? <laughs> You know, as much as I do, Nitch, um, if we make too many enemies, we just got to this town. That's, That's cool, man. I'll do it. No big deal. I'll be back. What, what are you going to do? Like I said, out. I'm just going to stake it out and look. That's all. Oh, you're just going to stake it out? You're not gonna yeah, I'm just going to see what's going on, you know? Okay. Play it by ear. Okay. You know how that goes. Let are, me know. Are you well, perhaps lying you know. I'm to playing it by me. ear. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing it by ear. Like, I'm going to see what opportunities present themselves. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> are you coming or are you, you in or are you out? Come on. <laughs> if I was going to go, I think I'd go alone. Well, that's why I, I, I'm I going alone. You can come with me or you can <laughs> stick it out by yourself or not at all. I thought we were all right, I'm going soon. now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Come back. Are we not leaving soon? Well, I not assume we're not leaving right this moment. No. We're not leaving yeah. immediately. Yes, all right, I'll meet you back at the end tonight. Maybe. Again, tonight. whatever opportunities present themselves. Yeah, a couple tonight. of hours, dude. What are we going to do from now till then? 
a secure passage. Uh... He's going off to pawn his clothes. I don't know if I no, know that, so never he's mind. Not. He's not because you, you guys I'm are not. arguing while Trent is like rummaging in his backpack, basically. Yeah, he's trying to pawn stuff. Like Trent, he's got, he's got at least an hour. Trent, I'll let him Trent, Trent. Please, uh, company. Uh, my friend needs here. I I will uh, su- supervise Trent and Tessa. What? And I don't need to secure, pa- secure passage <laughs> Super- for our, uh, need supervision. Himself. <laughs> I'll put my hand on Trent's shoulder and say, Trent, if don't don't pawn your stuff. If you want to pay me, you can pay me in this. This is some nice stuff. You don't have to go pawn it. They're gonna screw you there. You know that. Um, yeah, I I got fucked over on my family. Just go back go to the tavern out. while we're out. Um, I'll get the stuff. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll let Cal know. Okay. Just go talk to Cal, let him know the situation. Maybe look into getting a boat. Yeah, well, is that cool? Why don't you go do that, man? You're always talking about us young hatchlings botching stuff up. Go secure us some passage on the ship. I'm going to make sure Niche, um, you know, doesn't die. I'm not going to die. <laughs> right, right. And I'm going to sit. I'm going to s- sit across from an area not, and watch it. We're not splitting up, are we? We're going to, you know, meet back I think- up. I yeah, think we'll we're meet back up. at the tavern tonight. We'll meet back at the yeah. tavern. Don't, don't right. You guys aren't going to, like, disappear, are you? Because... I don't think any of us are named Benevolence. I think we're safe. What is... Sh- I'm going to look at Nitschmick, really? <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean... I'm sorry. Bad joke. Poor taste. Too, bad timing. Too soon. Too soon? <laughs> Let's go, Trent. We'll get we'll your beer. Keep, we'll right, Come on. Keep your hands in your pockets, you know. You know what happened earlier this morning. You guys hear what sounds like something breaking. It's like a loud twang, and see over by the side of the road uh, what looks to be a bard who's like tuning a, a guitar or a lute, and one of the strings snaps. And the homeless man looks over and goes, "God damn!" <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Hey, oh. Tess, show about what's done. Go have a go oh. have a, a musical. No, he, he just the- broke his string. Back yeah, to the bar. The perfect time Couple hours. <laughs> you can't lose. <laughs> He's missing the E chord. Go race like I just broke his leg. <laughs> Go challenge the guy in the wheelchair to a dance song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're splitting up with three and two, right? And going yeah. to go get. It. I thought okay. Trent was going back to Cal. Yeah, so I think we're doing two one, two, two, one. Two, two, one. Two, two, one. So the old one, split yourselves one up here as you are. The old two on two. The old, yeah, the old two one two zone defense here. Right. Hey, so I'm going to go get the boat alone. Is that what's happening? Yes. Yeah. I, t- <laughs> okay, I basically okay. got tired of you talking down to us and was like, well, you go do something. No, no, no. I don't talk down to you guys. I just call no. everyone hatchling. <laughs> right. It comes holiday. off like you're talking down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you guys go ahead and split up with. Uh, some of you headed to the tavern, uh, some of you headed to go and stake out somebody, and one of you to go pick up a boat. We'll start with you, Zakul. You know, having been in town for a time long enough, that there is a, uh, a set of docks over by the water, where there's a, um, a bunch of uh, kind of like sleepy fishing village types, but there's also a little bit closer towards the main portion of the city, like a proper dock that has like large galleys and things like that. And despite the fact that it's outside of the main city limits, this place in particular is very well guarded. And there's a lot of guardsmen that kind of go up and down the roads there. And if you're looking for a proper trade ship, that's probably where you're going. But if you want to find something smaller, you could go to the outskirts. Where are you headed exactly? I'm okay with something smaller. I'm pretty much looking for like the cheapest thing that we can find. (laughs) Right. Even if we're like riding in the... uh... Not necessarily the, the same thing, but <laughs> <laughs> we could technically be in, you know, the cargo hold among sacks of flour and whatnot. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so you go ahead and uh, kind of avoid that really expensive part of town, going to some of the smaller docks, and you can see that um, there are a number of vessels that are here which look like they're large enough to carry your party, small uh, sailing vessels that are maybe, you know, 30 feet across, that kind of thing. Uh, as you step over, are you looking for anything in particular or just kind of approaching the first one you see? Uh, anything in particular, uh, nothing in particular, as long as I think it will fit the five of us. Sure. Go ahead and make a luck roll for me, please.
Illusion, how much do I think my clothes are worth, by the way, or would I have no idea? About 15 gold, give or take a few. Okay. Luck roll of 14. Hmm. You step over towards one of these sailing vessels, and as things are over here, it's not really an official business so much as it is a captain who's seated by his ship that you see there, with a couple of crew members kind of milling about. He steps over towards you, and he says, uh, Foreigner, what do you need? Hell, good captain. We are looking for a ship that perhaps could provide passage to the south, to the ruins of Misty Town. Got a ship? Just yourself? Me and four others. He gives you a look, and... He says, I can do that. One-way trip. Ideally, if we can schedule some sort of return schedule, that would be ideal. But how much would the one-way cost? Five gold there, five back. No questions asked. A gold piece each. Yep. Nice and simple. Pretty penny you're, uh, you're charging there. I I'm thinking this costs a lot, right? For Yeah, we for were this told kind of costs. Yeah. So it's definitely it more than what today. Charlie mentioned. Go ahead and roll mm -hmm. an insight check for me. Yeah. yeah, this seems like extremely expensive. Oh uh, no! That <laughs> one. Okay. Um, you're aware of what Charlie told you, so there might be something else that is uh that's on this man's mind. He's definitely asking for more than what you had intended to pay originally. How you choose to go about that is up to you. Is there a chance I could just go somewhere else? If I if I don't if I think this is you this think there's other vessels around here that. that could definitely mm -hmm. fit your group if you want to try some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at this uh, okay. So what is this guy just standing in front of me saying five gold? He's probably suggesting that I'm doing something else or whatever. Right? Yeah, it's early in the morning. He's just standing there by the dock. It looks like he's eating a sandwich made of just bread and fish. He's kind of just, you know, shooting the shit with you, talking about the prices. There are some other ships further down the way if you wanted to try them. Perhaps, uh... I will check for the pricing of another captain for now, but I will return if... if I find no other ships. Alright, I don't think you're gonna find a better price, but you're welcome to go and look around. He takes a bite of his sandwich there. As you go over towards the next one, you find another vessel. It's slightly larger, maybe about 35 feet. Impressive. A set of dual sails there. And uh, as you make your way over, um, this one, most of the crew is already kind of on the boat. And it looks like they're sort of disembarking, um, carrying a bunch of stuff off of the ship and onto the docks. And as you step mm -hmm. up, uh, somebody kind of makes their way over towards you and goes, uh, Hey, can I help you, sir? Looks like a younger guy. Young sailor, I I require passage south to the ruins of uh, Misty Town. How much would you uh, charge for myself and four others? Oh well, we just pulled in. I mean, Captain usually likes to stay for a couple of days before heading back out. You need to go right now. Time is of the essence. Right, I'll go ask him, alright? He turns and he runs back onto the ship. And when he comes back, he tells you... Uh, Captain said that'd be okay, but uh, you're looking at about ten gold each. Or sorry, ten Ooh. gold for the whole thing. Am I getting the feeling that people on the docks here just don't like Dragonborn? Or that I'm not inhuman? I would say with your insight roll, you have no idea. But there's something going on here, and it's kind of frustrating to go from one place to another mm -hmm. and find that the prices are getting heftier. 
Okay, so if I were to find like the seediest looking guns, was that that first group? I'd say the first one you went to is probably the seediest, yeah. Their okay. ship looks like it's in the most disrepair. It's kind of sitting there not doing anything. Alright, so I return back to them. Sure. Guy seems to be finishing up his sandwich. He says, uh, well. Are you, uh, are you charging me more for, uh, this passage for any particular reason? No, my rates are fair. Doesn't seem to be that way, according to uh, some of the other captains. They say, you're the cheapest boat here. He says, look, what? friend. And he kind of steps over towards you, so he's kind of, you know, speaking a little bit uh, more quietly. And amidst the sound of the sort of um, creaking wood and the water lapping up against the docks, he whispers to you and says, Five gold for no questions asked is not a bad deal. He kind of leans back. And what do you think I am uh, asking as the purpose of this passage? I don't think anything. Hmm. Now, does he think I'm like slave a uh, slave trader or something what's going on here i'm a little confused um, you know, i'd say I, I cannot give you any of that info mm -hmm. given the check that you rolled right, right. <laughs> this is just uh the experience of not knowing what the fuck is going on mm -hmm. so what do i think if i were to take this ship from them eventually like if we went along the way and then like Push them all off the boat or whatever. Will we be able to sell? <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> You're fucking putting the cart before yeah. the horse. No, no, I'm just saying. You're going to secure what? us some passage. Will we be? Will we be able to sell this shit, like ourselves, or is this like out, like just skirting along the coastline, not even going? Would you be to able sea? to sail this yourselves? Are you a sailor? That is not this character's background, right? Uh, you have no idea how to sail. Okay. You don't. You don't know any of the terminology or know what any of the ropes do. You're. That that would be completely mm -hmm. foreign to you. Okay, but you could probably we... mutiny this man. He looks like he's had a scrap or two, but you think that you're stronger than him. But mm -hmm. <laughs> what you would do with the ship afterwards? <laughs> probably crash okay. it into a rock. <laughs> so the plan could also be, you know, we agree to this and then. Just one way trip. As long as everybody's okay with it once I get back and explain the plan to them. Yeah, okay. Alright, I'm fine with this. Are you gonna pay him? I'll I'll agree to this one way for now, but we'll we'll um make the arrangements for the return trip next time. I'll pay you the gold when we assemble here. When when can you leave at the earliest? I'm free all day. My crew's around town. I'll gather them up. Okay, so, um, are you willing to leave at night? That's fine by me. Okay, I will return. See you later, Mr. Dragon. And he kind of turns what away is, and steps onto the boat. What is your name, fine captain? Uh, Captain's fine. And he gives you a smile as he says that. Fine captain. Captain's fine. Hey. <laughs> I turn away and I return towards um, Ursa's tavern here. Sure. At this point, two of you have made it back to, uh, to Ursa's tavern, have stepped through. You can see that one of the tables in the corner has a couple of commoners that seem to be having some of that breakfast porridge, and they're uh, kind of chit-chatting to themselves. They don't look like anybody that you guys know. And Cal is over there at the bar and kind of gives you guys a nod as you step in. Cal, can I get some lunch and... Two beers, please. Sure, yeah. Uh, Thanks. Wait, two beers? Where's Trent? Oh, Trent's there with you. Um, but uh, he looks like he's kind of surprised, and, and he says, You don't happen to have uh, made some money on your short trip into town there, did you? 
Nope, not me. No reason I brought him what? Oh, right, we had to tell you. <laughs> That's how weird open up. He says, uh... I'll open my book and recall from it. Sure, so what are you telling him exactly? What do you say to him? I'm telling him that we talked to Lead Boy, and no. Very strange the butler was acting, but also that, according to him, uh, Benevolence's caravan dropped her off, but she was not there at the pickup. So they left without her. Oh, damn. I really hope nothing, like, nothing bad's happened And that we're planning to, to go there tonight. Oh. You're, you're going to the ruins. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Adventure. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, sorry about the ale thing. I just, you know, thought you guys were broke. Here. And he, he kind of goes uh, over and gets you yeah. some. And then he looks towards you, Tessa, like you're going to pay him. How much? Uh, you know that it's two copper for a beer. Well, so it's two beers and some food, though. Yeah, so it's probably like five copper. All right, I'll give him... A crap, silver. Jimmy, do you not have one copper? <laughs> I'll give him a I, I spent every single gold that I started with. <laughs> Living the good life. <laughs> I do have rations for when we leave, though. <laughs> okay, so you guys get uh, a couple of ales here on Tessa's buck and uh, some food. And uh, um, Cal while there he's says, in the back, "Sorry, what's up?" While he's like away, can I try my my little homebrew uh, liquor here? Sure. Just like a small swig of it. Make a uh, brewery check for me. Because I, yeah, I haven't even. What, uh, would this be intelligence? Uh, I'd be okay with that. Thing? Oh, that, that die is super janked. <gasps> a jank? No. It still happens. It still happens. <laughs> I had to use a wall for it. Uh, so that's 15 plus proficiency is 17. Okay. Uh, you Give it a swig, and for something made out of like a kit that you can basically fold and collapse in your backpack, um, it's pretty good. Uh, you've been using one of the uh, like a barrel here, a spare one that uh, has been kind of just lent to you by Cal, and for something whipped up in a barrel, it's it's actually pretty good. Um, you'd say it's like on par for the ale here. I'll um. When he gets back, I'll ask him if uh, if he brews his own, or I guess I'll do it in character. When he gets back, just let me know. Sure. Yeah, he comes back over towards you. Uh, hey, Cal, I got a question for you. Yeah, what's up, Trent? Do you uh, do you make your own beer here, or do you uh, import it? Uh, no, I've got a guy in town that I, I buy it from. I uh, gotcha. Do you uh, do you know where he? Uh, Bruce his stuff because I'm uh, I'm I'm working on uh, my skills and I think I uh, have kind of a knack for it. And I, I like hold up my little flask of liquor. He extends a hand Back. to taste it. Do you, do you let him? Sure. Yeah. Or he takes it and gives it a swig. Let's see if it's up his alley. Hmm. He hands it back to you and says. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Do I even need to roll insight to tell that he doesn't like it? No. <laughs> oh man. He made he's, some natty light. Yeah, he's just kind of. It, it seems like he's he's not really digging it, and he says, "Well, if you're looking to to learn, I mean, there's there's some brewers in town you could speak to." Um can't remember the name off the top of my head, though. You'll have to find him on your own, buddy. Alright. No worries. Fucking shit's bad. I just look completely downtrodden. Just put it away. Hey, uh... Hey, don't worry about it, Trent. I mean, everyone starts somewhere. Yeah. I, I just thought it was pretty good. And I... I don't know, maybe I just don't have a palate for it, whatever they call it, I don't know. Too used to drinking, uh, no offense, but like, rail drinks, I guess. Goes, uh, you know, don't worry about it. And he, he goes and gets you some food as well, despite the fact that, uh, um, 
things have been paid for. He doesn't actually charge you either, it seems that he's kind of just trying to do you a solid here and brings you something to eat. Thanks, Cal. Meanwhile, somewhere else in town, I would say that you guys have made your way back over in front of Leadboy and are standing there amidst all the different stables and everything. What are you two going to do? I'm literally Mitch. just going to hide and post up and watch and wait for this butler. How long are you guys going to wait here for? I'm going to wait until I fucking see him. Mitch, what are we doing here? We just <laughs> We're... Wait. Look, I just want to see what this guy does. That's all. What he I do works as a butler at Leadboy. I'm aware. I want to see where he lives. He says he doesn't get off. He's on all afternoon. You're gonna wait here for him? Yeah, we got nothing better to do. I, I don't want to hear Zakel prattle on about eggs and yolks and shit. I have you? plenty better to do. You're, so you're gonna be here for a few hours. So I can. That's what I'm saying. I don't know when he's gonna leave. You wouldn't tell me when he's off the shift. It's worth. I just asked if you wanted to come along. Smells like horse shit. And <laughs> yeah, I have my mask. I have my mask over my face. And at all Mitch is pointing to like a, a little hidden bench here, <laughs> to just like stake it out and everything. Yeah, like I'm used to this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is uh, poor conditions and having to wait long periods of time. Niche, it's right up your alley, but I'll be back in a few hours, okay? I'll I come... may or may not be here. It depends on when this guy leaves. But He's I'll tell you what. Be when I'm done, hours. when I'm done, I'll meet you at the end. All right? If you finish here before I get back, go to the end. I need I'll to meet go you buy at the end. Things. I'm aware. That's always been the plan. Perfect. I'll see you right. in a bit. Oh, by the way, if it gets to be late and I'm out at the end, you should come back here. <laughs> just kidding, kind of. I, but seriously. I, narrow my, I narrow my case. Just kidding, but kind of, seriously. It's just a thought, you know? You never know what might happen. And you can't tell I'm smiling, but I'm smiling underneath of my... My little mask here. <laughs> my little mask. I'm sure it'll all work out just fine for you. Right, right, alright. You're uh, gonna blow my cover, get out of here. Mitch, I'd like you to make a luck check, please. A luck check? Oh yeah. god. Um, god damn it! This is so baffling to me because I keep, I'm in roll twenty and I keep making checks in roll twenty. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're used to it. Because that's where my uh, thing is. It is character. Oh, control. it was almost eighteen. Ten. Ten. Luck check. Okay. So average luck. Average luck. All right. The two of you are talking there. What's the consensus, Morton? Are you uh? Merton, are you stepping away, or what? I'm going to buy those materials for uh, print. Oh, you have the gold. I, I do, yes. Okay. So you go off looking for this uh, this fence, and you know that he operates out of a house in one of the squalid regions here, so it's going to take you a minute to walk over there. During that time, fine, fine. Uh, you kind of settle in here, Niche, and post up, and I'd like you to make a stealth check, please. That two roll with a plus, I don't know, it's not going to be enough. <laughs> with a fucking plus, uh, plus five, seven, seven. Seven, okay. You go ahead and hide there over in the corner and start your stake out. Meanwhile, at the tavern, um, so cool, you eventually step inside and find the group eating there. Would you just kind of join them at the bar? Sure. I will join them. You guys see your friend come back here. I found this passage. He's a cool. Hello, Trent. I found this passage south. That's good. Hey, he's a cool. Uh, how much is it going to run us? It will run me five for... A temporary time. It's worth mentioning that the hatchling uh, here looks like noticeably saddened. Uh, I, I've noticed. Okay. I was about to say something. Five there, and then five back, or five total trip? We may have to walk back, depending on the circumstances. Walk back. Interesting. Interesting. Trent. <laughs> Is everything okay? Do you want me to go with you next time you scout it out? You are welcome to come along next time, Tessa. But okay. the uh, 
the bunch that I found won't be missed if uh, they go missing. Ah. Oh. Okay. Perfectly fine. <laughs> We're so <laughs> evil. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere like else look in up town. Hey, I like to look up surprise. Okay? When he says to, to nobody will miss them, I like look up surprise for a moment and then just like go back to eating. Sure, man. Accept it. You may, I, uh, you may finally have some of that adventure you were looking for. It's good, I guess. I do, I do warn you, Trent. Hatchling Trent. What is wrong? Uh, just being hatchling, I suppose. <laughs> oh no! I, uh, oh. <laughs> I kind of finish up with my food here. Haven't even touched my ale. Just like, thanks, uh, thanks, Tessa. Uh, I guess I'll just be up in my room. When we leave, just come grab me. I'll head up there. Okay, well, like, if he actually steps away, I'm gonna lean over to Tessa and go, like, what happened to him in the short time I was gone? Oh, did he walk away? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, like, heading up the stairs. Um, well, Trent was pretty excited about his his brew he made, and he said it tasted pretty good, but then when Cal tasted it, definitely wasn't feeling it. <laughs> he is truly a hatchling. <laughs> All you human and half elf ales are nothing to me anyway. Nothing like dragon ale. All that stuff tastes pretty bad. So he has nothing to worry about. Yeah, he's just trying to make money off of it. So cool. Well, peddling not so great ale seems to be skill that humans do every day. Perhaps you should ask Cal. Oh, I'm not gonna ask Cal. Cal sources his alcohol. Now meanwhile, elsewhere in town, Merton, you've stepped up to the familiar abode here where you know you can get a hold of some of the uh, less savory items, a... as well as pawning off everything. Is it a pretty shady part of town? You know what? Surprisingly enough, it's not. It's actually, um... It's a, a small, uh, it's like a small house built on top of a, a general store nearby. Like, there's a general store there, and then, like, a loft almost up top, and the loft is where you do your business. It's just up, like, a little, like, rickety flight of steps. Cool. So I don't have to be worried about, like, being seen in this part of town because it's not, like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of make your way around there and uh, head up and do like the, the two wait and then one more tap kind of knock and uh, eventually the door opens up and you see your, your contact there. He actually dresses kind of similarly to, uh, to Niche where he usually keeps like a hood on and like a mask over his face sort of. <laughs> Despite the fact that he's in like, you know, just a, a room by himself the whole time. He goes, uh, hey. Hey. Just kind of step to the side so you can step in. Looking for uh, some stuff to forge some documents. You got that on you? Stuff I showed you last time? Yeah, that stuff. Sure thing. What kind of work you doing? Um, you can see he's not... rifling through his desk and pulling some stuff out. It's not for me this time, actually. It's for, uh, it's for a kid I've been with for about a month now or there's no months about three ten days now not, not too sure why he wants it I think he ran away from home these are pretty good papers he was this good kid papers uh, well I think he was royalty I think he doesn't want to be anymore hmm. interesting no a family I do. What do you say? I give this to you for 25. I think it's a little bit more valuable than that. Let's keep it 30. Alright. Fine by me. 
He hands over the stuff to you, bagged up. Do you hand him the 30 gold? Yeah, and I'll check it to make sure it's good. Okay. You give it a look. He hasn't slighted you at all. He takes the gold here and pockets it away. He says, well, if you ever change your mind, it's uh, keeping an ear to the ground. You know I'll be back if I change it. You, uh... You gonna be in town for a while there. I think we're leaving tonight for uh, about a ten day. Why? Something come up? No. Just uh, wondering if you'll be around, that kind of thing. No reason. No reason. Curious thing to ask then. My insight has no reason. Sure, go for it. You're gonna have to roll well. Fourteen. Fourteen. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> you're not sure what he's getting at. Most of his facial features are hidden, and it's tough to really read what he's what he's saying. You can't tell if he's like looking at you with malice, or if he's smiling, or if he's just deadpan. You just kind of get like his eyes, right? Come on, spit it out. What do you want from me? No, no. That's nothing. Just wanted to hang out or something? Come on, I know you want me in town for some reason. It's gonna cost me? Well, money always helps words go by. You have some more coin? Depends what you're wanting me in town for, doesn't it? You Things are about nothing. to get busy here. He puts out his hand after saying yeah. that. I would have flipped him one right when he said it. Sure. Right, I'm interested. Like, synchronously, <laughs> you know, he says yeah. that, you each exchange, he takes the gold, goes, uh... uh Talk amongst the boys. A few things might be going down. Soon you'd be good with a forgery. You're the skulking type. Might be some gold to be made. I'm interested. Cool. Well, I hope you'll be in town a little later on, then. I will be. You let me know if you need my services. You consider dropping that name for me later. Your friend, that is. I will. We're still new. Once we, uh know each other a little longer. Perhaps. See you later. See ya. You step away and make your way out of the uh, apartment there. Are you going back towards uh, Ursa's? No, I'd be going back to check on uh, Mitch. Okay. Some time Stealthy has passed. Mitch. And you get back there and... Uh, Nitch, what have you been doing to kill the time while you're seated on this bench? Nothing. <laughs> like, literally I... twiddling his thumbs. <laughs> no, I'm literally... You have to understand, my background is I was... A, I was uh, you guys don't know this, but I was a spy. You're so motionless is... staring at the house across the way. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you look away, something could happen. Something interesting. So I'm just literally scanning, like, watching everything. If there's... People, I'm trying to memorize faces. I'm Jason Board. I yep. memorized the license plates. Merton, as you return, your friend is there almost as though you turned away and looked back like nothing has changed. He's just seated in the exact same position. <clears throat> I don't even turn and look at him. Yes? You haven't moved, have you? No. I told you I was going to be doing this. Say, uh, do you want those sheets that are in there? Uh, I almost, I almost turned to look at them, but not quite. And then I go, well, I, I guess. Okay. I mean, it would what be useful, I, wouldn't it? Yeah. What do you say you, uh, help me out? With, uh, what did you have in mind? Hmm. Why don't you just go in there and... Talk to the butler for a little while. He's not quite fine of me. He'll kick me out on the spot. 
Mm. Shit. All right. Hold on. God damn it. Um, out of character, do Why don't you take your mask off. He so this is this is what I was thinking. So, uh, out of character, can I like take some of my armor off and kind of change my appearance to like some degree? I have a disguise kit. I can help you to a degree. Well, but I mean, like, what if there was? What if there was? What if there happened to be a a defining characterization of me that would draw its attention to some some very odd you know when someone has a really big mole in their face and you can't stop looking at the mole okay I've let's amp that up before, let's perhaps. amp that up time let's amp that up times a hundred so i turn to you want to Merton replace your face say, with a mole nope I turn to Mert and I say, all right, I'll do it, but under one condition. Yeah, what's that? You don't tell anyone about this. Not I a soul. wasn't planning to anyway. Fine. But before right. this goes any further, what is the building made of? What is the what? Building, building? made of. Oh, it's just wood. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, oh, um, Jesus. just go in there and talk about getting a job. Just take your time, if you know what I mean. All right. So I start taking off uh, some of my armor, um, and I remove my, my swords, and um, I kind of start to strip down to some degree, and uh, I would kind of do this away from the spot. Sure. Um, yeah, I'd, and let's go to like I'll, an alley or something. I'll still have my like cloak on. Um, and I say, all right, I'll be back. And I walk towards the, um, I, w I start walking over towards, uh, lead boy. So and are, uh, right before, what's the uh, armor you normally wear? Leather? Uh, I, yeah, leather. Okay. I think so. Let me, let me check on my character sheet. Cause like I wanted to do scale. Let me look at my sheet. No, I wear chain. I wear chain. Right. So you probably look pretty similar, stripping down and stuff. Do you wear, like, undergarments and stuff? I mean, if you have, like, additional sets have, of clothes and stuff. I have an extra set of fine clothes that comes with my background that I could lend to them. Yeah, that might help. But as it is right now, I'll tell you, like, you don't look very far removed from how you were. Okay, so I'm gonna, to I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do that as well. Sure. Well, I'll... I'll try to help as much as I can with my extra clothes and my disguise kit. Sure, make a disguise kit check. Okay. Are you actually letting him mess with your face here? No. Oh, uh, okay. 15 plus... Is it deception and proficiency? Uh, no, I would just say that it would be uh, like charisma added on top. <laughs> oh, charisma. So 15 plus charisma is 18. Yeah, but and this disguise kit, get... so 20. So, <clears throat> you go ahead and pass him these uh, these fine clothes and kind of tailor them up and make it look like they actually fit him, despite the fact that it's not really meant for someone of his size. And after that, um, how are you hiding your face right now? Are you still keeping like a bandana around and like a hood? So on? I I always have my face hidden. Yeah. So I'm going to unhide it. Right, but you're not doing that for Merton. No. Okay. So Merton, while you go ahead and like get him dressed and everything, he keeps making you kind of like look away and stuff like that, so that you don't see what his face looks like whenever you're clothing him and whatnot. To the point where he even keeps like the bandana around his face and like the hood on and everything like that. Um. Eventually, though, it's finished. And you have this weird look of a man with like a hood and cloak and a bandana over his face and then like fine noble clothes underneath. <laughs> Alright, Merton, stay here. And I I walk off towards the um Um to wait, the... Ho ho hold on. What? What's going on? <laughs> Do you know what your job in this is? Yeah. Stall. It's pretty obvious. I'll stall as long as I can. And when I'm kicked out, I'm kicked out. Good. How much time do you need? 
depends how much paper is in the back room. Estimate. Depends how much paper, I don't know. Gas. Didn't get a look in the room? A half hour would be good. If you a half go, an hour? Get like a job interview. I'm not you very want... friendly. Well, better learn to be. <laughs> Fine. All right. I'll see what I can do, and I'll give you a... <laughs> when I'm bailing out. <laughs> that was a whistle. A, a whistle that I couldn't do because it's so ridiculous. No, you just, you just. How about you just don't do that? I'll it's just yell. Okay. I'll just cuss. That's actually not gonna work, because I cuss Just don't a lot. do anything. Okay, At this I'll point, be... you guys can see that you're being watched, and nearby there's what? like a yeah no there's there's a house nearby where uh, through the window it looks like there's a set of two children probably about the age of like four or five there's like a girl and a boy both staring through the pane there at the two of you as you're talking there and it looks like right. they're they're attracted to the sight of like this man in like fine clothes with like did a we not get to cloak. an alley yeah but the, it's it's an yeah, alley like, and then it's like a bunch of houses the... and stuff like that oh, okay. clustered well, together. you know so i'm gonna turn and as i start to, to make my way away from merton i'm gonna start taking off uh, the, the cloak and stuff and just kind of stuffing it into my bags with my back turned to him and I'm gonna reveal my face and um, just out of character so you guys don't know I have a really uh, big like burn on the left hand side of my face coming from like my eye line down to like in my jaw and shit Prince Zuko <laughs> okay. um, I'm edge lording so I just have like it's like absolutely gross right okay you step up, floor, boys. and as you go in, I'd like you to make a deception check in order to uh, see how well you disguise your voice. Uh, that is a 15. Okay, let's see what he gets here. What's the first thing you're saying to him when you come in and he looks over at you? I'm just going to walk up to the, to the counter. Okay. All right. You step in and make your way over towards the counter, and in your fine clothes and everything, um, the man there kind of stares at you for a second, and he says, "Yes, can I help you?" Uh, well, I was kind of hoping you could help me. Uh, the name's Jackson. Um, I heard that the leaden boy was possibly hiring. Hiring some help. Kind of narrows his eyes for a second, and uh, he kind of looks over at one of the servant boys nearby, and then kind of like looks back, and he says, No, we weren't looking for anybody else. Where did you hear this? Well, actually, I kind of put my palm to my face. I, I have to confess, I, I've been, I'm desperate. I've been going from place to place, and I mean, it's obvious why no one will hire me. I, I just need, I need some, I need something to be able to, something to be able to do. Ever since this happened to me, I just can't, I can't find anything. I'll work in the back. I'll, I'll clean up after the horses. I'll sleep in the stable i i just i i i'll do anything i just i just need a job just something to eat mm. something to put food in my mouth and i'll and i'll work hard i'm a hard worker i have no other option he seems to uh pause for a second as he thinks it over and meanwhile merton what are you doing um in that alley next to lead boy uh, where the wall, where the uh, like the, the other portion of the building would with, be, yeah, with the papers in it that he came out of. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna wait until. Well, first, I'd like to. Well, I need no one to be watching. So in the alley, um, hopefully, there's somewhere I can find totally away from everything. Sure. Is that possible? It's a it's a busy time of day. 
And there's people, you know, kind of doing this and that now that uh, the afternoon is coming around. But you might be able to find a timing window where you could do this, even in the little alley there. Um, go ahead yeah. and make a, a stealth check for me. Oh, that's a 24. Okay. I need to do that, and because I, I want to disguise myself as a butler using disguise self, and then I want to phase phase through the wall into the the room with the papers. Interesting. Okay. That's a thing you can do. So you wait till there's an opportune moment where nobody's looking, cast the spell, and step forward. And for a brief moment, you pass into a semi sort of ethereal state, and you go straight through the wall. And step into what looks like a, a somewhat well-lit um, room of some kind. It looks like a study. There's a, a desk over there in the corner. There's a bookshelf nearby. Though the books look to be more like stacks of paper, not really like novels to read or anything like that. There's also like a little cabinet nearby. There's a, a couple of chests, um, some doors leading somewhere else. Perfect. Okay. So if there's any, like, labels to how these things are labeled, or uh, something looks fresh on a table... Investigation uh, check. I'm obviously trying to look for... Sheet. Oh! Well, minus What'd one. What'd you 18. roll? <laughs> that gets me rolled, every time. I rolled a 19, but... You right. know, minus uh, one. I'm definitely gonna take it. As you look around, you seize <laughs> upon what it is that you need. And there at the center of the desk, um, almost like it was just kind of put down there without being sorted away, are the exact same papers that the man was holding before. And it's it's like he had to go and do something and just quickly put them down there. And they're just lying face up there on the desk. Uh, perfect. I'd love to uh, grab it really quick. And can I take out a piece of parchment and quickly make a forgery of it? So that he thinks uh, no one stole it. And then get out of there. Forgery of it. I would say that to copy all the info on this page would take a considerable amount of time versus just trying to remember the gist of it. Are you willing to do that? Ooh. Oh, okay. Um, I'll make myself some notes then and keep that. Sure. How about that? As you look down at the pieces of paper that are there, you can see it's a, it's like a little, um, almost like a log of uh, a particular expedition. They all seem to have numbers and things like that. Most of it is just gibberish, but you do see like the name Benev uh, sorry, Benevolence is there. And Perfect. it seems that the price that she had paid to get over to that spot um, was about 10 gold pieces there. Uh, you can also see stuff like uh, there was a, um, what's it called, uh, like a retinue of guard that were supposed to go along for this caravan because mm -hmm. they were going to be traveling by horse. You can also see that upon getting to the outskirts, um, the driver was told to wait for a certain period of time, um, equal to about a day, and she didn't come <coughs> back. And you can see that the driver mentions that he left and um, kind of returned back to town immediately once that time was missed. Like, didn't stay there like a minute late or, you know, anything like that. She didn't come back and he returned back to town. And the, it is correct that the last place she was known to go is the ruins. Yes. It seems okay. that they were instructed to stay a certain distance away from there and with the... Uh, the guards there, they camped for about a day, and then when she didn't turn up, they turned back and returned. Is there anything about what they were actually doing there? Oh, interesting. You do see at the bottom that there's a note, which seems to be like a personal thing that the driver has written down, and he says, don't know what she was doing there, probably dead. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll get some quick hand notes and get out the same way I came. Sure. <clears throat> you turn around and head over, and meanwhile, in the main room, uh, you go ahead and tell this sort of sob story to the man, and it doesn't really seem like the butler's buying it, and he just says to you, I'm sorry to hear that, sir, but we're not looking for help. Um, 
I, I appreciate the offer, but uh, even just keeping these few here in line is trouble enough. Uh, I, I try some of the other places. Uh, you never know. Some people are very accommodating here. Well, I appreciate your honesty and sincerity. If you need anything, please let me know. And I look very dejected as I turn and kind of... It gives you kind of like a, a you know, like a false smile. Like, like he, you know, it's pity that's on his face. And despite yeah. how sort of tight-lipped this guy is, you think that he actually genuinely feels kind of bad for you. Uh, when you turn around and, and head out. And uh, when you make your way outside, you can see somewhat nearby, like a building away, that uh, Merton is there. Well, I I turn immediately as, as the door closes behind me and immediately turn and begin to do my bandana. And Roll a luck check for me. Up. Ooh, ah, yeah, I, no. I definitely, I definitely want to see what he looks like. No, you didn't, you didn't say you were looking for it. It's passive. Son of a bitch! What That's the, not a good luck that? check. I need a perception roll from you, please. <laughs> Merton. Hold on. I'm trying to do this stealthily, though, I feel like. Ah, net 20! Ah! I, feel like, uh, I feel like I was trying to do this stealthily. You Doesn't see matter. it. You look over, and it's like, as you turn and go to put the cloak on, you guys have that awkward moment where you both meet eyes, and you see that... Uh, your friend here has a, a huge burn over the cross of his face. And he quickly just like, shh, you know, covers it up. Just keep looking at him. I walk back forever to him. <laughs> Merton knows he must die again. Did you get, did you get what you needed? Yeah. Alright, let me take a look. What did you figure out? That you're ugly. <laughs> Sorry. Well, to be honest, um, not much more than we already knew. Um, she's at the ruins. Uh, they didn't wait for her. They don't know. What, they don't know what she was doing there. But it's confirming that she is there, which is good. All right. You don't have to beat the hell out of this butler then. That's good. I don't think so. You were in there pretty quick. That was not thirty minutes. Savage. Honestly, I um. How'd it go? Did you get, did you get a job? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Do I know that he saw my face? We made eye contact. You said right. Yes, you definitely know. Yeah, when I uh, when I look like that, usually I get pity for about three minutes. That's about all I'm good for. Look like what? Hmm. Better be back to the tavern. See what Gale knows. See if they... If Zeagle fucking screwed us on this boat or not. It's okay. I said I'd keep the secret, right? Uh -huh. Are you purposely messing up the names, by the way? Uh, no, I can't. Am I fucking up the names? I'm horrible. Oh, okay. I'm Chase, actually... Chase not, like I'm absolute horrible with it. Okay, yeah, okay. So the tavern totally follower... Cool. I'm so... I, like, I am actually not trying to be a dick. Like, I no, 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 literally I got just no. fucked it up. Because the tavern person was Cal. I was, I was like, is this a character trait? You're like, is Kale? This... And I was like, Kale? Oh, uh, I'm so bad this at this. This is a Chase trait. Okay, okay. I have, I have <laughs> no idea how Chase does sales because, in my mind, he must call every customer the wrong first name. Oh, no. I, I have to have constantly, like, everyone's name in front of me. And I, it, like, I, I don't use people's names. I, I, it's like an art because I, I fuck them up constantly. Sorry <laughs> to interrupt you. Buddy, I haven't seen you in a while. Buddy. <laughs> I, I, it's honestly it 100%. Okay, so you two are headed back to the tower. I'd probably give him some, like, uh... You know, we all hide things. I just absolutely ignore this. It's okay. <laughs> okay, brooding, the two of you head back, and, uh... <laughs> meanwhile in the tavern, with, uh, your youngest kind of slipping away to his room, feeling a bit, uh, sorrowful and dejected and all that uh, the two of you are there at the bar when the door opens up and merton returns here with uh with niche in tow 
Hello, Martin. Hold on. Hello, Nick. So before they return, could I have gone up to uh, young Trent's room there? Sure. Yeah, let's say Tess is the one at the bar who turns over and does that. And meanwhile, you're kind of like in the hall. And uh, we'll okay. get to you in a second there. Um, sure, but the two stepping inside, uh, what do you guys do here? Tessa greets you all. The whole gang's here? Uh, yeah, Zakul went upstairs to talk to Trent for a little bit, but he did end up finding a boat. Good. We'll catch up on the details later. Everything's in order, then. I'm gonna the give him, like, a shifty eye. The butler's story checks out. Oh, uh, yeah? Alright. Uh, Cal makes his way over towards you guys. He goes, uh, Hey, so so what's going on here? Tessa says that uh, mm. the benevolence went off and... Yes, we have some more information. I think you of all people need to know. Um, well, I'll tell you everything that I know. They took the trip up there. Right. She went off on her own to the ruins for an unknown reason that no one knew. I... Uh, Unfortunately, they only waited the exactly allotted time. They didn't give her any extra, so if she was running even a minute late, uh, they just left without her. It seems the expedition was her idea. Well, she's not late, so something must have happened. She's, she's right. generally never late. No, never. Does she have a tendency to do these types of things? It seems this whole expedition was her idea. She wasn't just going along as kind of guard or for work yeah well you know she we, we keep in touch and this isn't the first note she's left she, she generally you know sleeps here if she's gonna be in town sometimes she goes off but i've never had her say she'd show up one day and end up not doing so fair enough well she didn't she didn't tell you anything about the ruins no said just the note that I showed you there. Well, we'll do everything we can to find out what happened. How does he look? Does he look, like, sad, really sad about this? Like, really upset? He doesn't look sad, but he looks a little worried. Okay, he looks worried. Things happen. You know, she might have got caught up. No one's punctual 100% of the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a first for everything, right? She's probably just, yeah, you know, got her times mixed up or something. She's probably, she might, I mean, she might be walking back right now, you know. Or Who maybe knows? she found what she was looking for and got really lucky. We'll okay. Do what we can. Meanwhile, at this point, over in the hallway, it's a so cool. You've gone up to the door where you know that Trent is. I knock and I go, Young Hetzling Trent. Hey, what's up, Zakul? How's it going, man? I heard you succeeded in brewing a concoction. I did, yeah. Allow me to try your swim. <laughs> I would, but it's all gone, man. <laughs> ah, none left for me. I'll make you something if you want to get me some, some more materials, but I'm broke. Well, I got listen. nothing. Well, I, I, I like go over and like grab him by the shoulders, and like, you know, do that drunk, like get real close for no reason thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even have a name. <laughs> I am so fucked. I'm wearing my fine clothes, too. Oh. <laughs> There's like a bunch of yeah. your old clothes laying on the ground in the room. <laughs> well, no name, Hatsley. You appear to uh, be ready. Um, assured yourself some courage there. If we're ready, we're, we disembark in a few hours. Oh, shit. we're going tonight. Correct. I have arranged the pass itself. It's going to take overnight to get there, right? More than that. Alrighty, man. <laughs> hey, are boats cool? I've never been on a boat. Dad used to have a boat. 
He said something about I don't remember, but <laughs> he liked this boat, man. I'm excited. Is it a nice one? Is it big? It's not Are a we... very large boat, but we could definitely drink some uh, more when we get on. How about I get you some uh, materials from town so you can brew us? I think I think um, a bit more as we go. Uh, I don't know, man. Apparently, I'm pretty shit at it. So nonsense. All humans are shit at it. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Hey, never mind. That's rude. I, I was raised better. Well, as long as you don't kiss me, human, let us go downstairs. No, I wasn't going to kiss you. I was just going to ask what having scales... And I, like, cover my mouth. Oops. <laughs> well, no different than your, uh... No different than you, scaleless one. I'll bet. Probably more comfortable that you don't have to be careful of every little blade. I guess so. I hear just your skin so even cuts when paper brushes against it in the wrong way. That sounds like more of a nuisance than having scales. My hands had so many paper cuts in the school, dude. That's one thing I won't miss. I'd like you to make a luck roll, please, Trent. Is he gonna cut himself on my scale? What is this? It is a seven luck check. You think back to your school days, and for a brief moment, you have a flashback and hear, like, Mr. Chow yell in the background. Ah, yeah! And you, like, just stare off, and you see he does, like, a, a mile-yard stare over your shoulder for a brief moment there. There's something yeah, wrong, Hatchling. <laughs> something there. Nah, just some prick. Thinking about him. This old douchebag teacher. <laughs> Look at this. And I pull out his. Uh, you do a little magic, right? Zoon has blessed me with his gifts. Yo, look at this piece of shit. And I pull out his book and toss it over to uh, Zakul. You're handed a textbook <laughs> that reads uh, Music and Magic. Written by Mr. Chow. Yes. <laughs> Professor Chow. Music and magic. Even you a cursory know. flip through it will tell you that it is utter garbage. <laughs> yes, humans are uh, very likely to make utter garbage, I found. Yo, you it's really like, don't like people, do you? No, no, no. no. I, <laughs> I like people. This, uh, this just seems like a waste of time, though. And I give him the book back. Yeah, it is kind of a... I'll take it with Mage Hand and, like, just kind of, like, fly it around the room. And I'll have, like, the Mage Hand, like, flap it like it's, like, a pair of wings. <laughs> it, like, flies around the room. Sure. Uh, are we leaving now, then, man? Is everybody back? What happened to uh, Nikki and uh, Murky Murk? Well, they have not returned yet, but if we can gather ourselves in the main lobby... Perhaps we can share our information before we head out tonight. All right, dude. I'm just going to go take a leak real quick. Then I'll be good to go. Well, don't fall out of the nest, young one. I'll go downstairs. Sure. You head back and find that the rest of the party has actually gathered. And while you're having your chat, it seems that Merton and Niche have come back. Niche. Um, Edge. Edge. Question. Illusion. <laughs> yes. Would it be possible for that to have all been deception? Oh. Because I didn't actually drink all the liquor or anything. I just was kind of playing drunk. What? Uh, well, that's quite a bit to retcon. So, I'd say... Well, I mean, I know I didn't say anything about it, but I also didn't want to, like... Yeah. No. Sure, make a deception I... roll for me. And uh, make a perception roll, please, there, at disadvantage. That's well, a cool. God. I'm fine with just believing wall. him. Because sure. I'm readily believing the party here. Okay, sure. Yeah, you can play that off. Because I still kind of want to be sad about this whole thing. But <laughs> I'll, I'm just going to be playing drunk for the rest of the night. Okay. <laughs> 
I'll head downstairs after going to the bathroom. Sure. The whole gang's here. The gang's all here. I, I don't know. What's up, everybody? Trev, have you been drinking? Maybe. All right. Didn't whatever. save any for us. So has anything changed, Paladin Merton? We still headed to the ruins of Misty Town. Things have changed. The plan has not. We leave as soon as we can. Did you book passage? There is a ship leaving tonight as soon as we are prepared to leave. Uh, you see that Cal leans over and he goes, Hey, uh, look, I know that we talked about this earlier. If, uh, if you guys are really going to do this, I'll, I'll pay you in advance. At least part of it. Don't be ridiculous, Cal. This is a great friend of yours. The fact you're even paying us at all. No, I'm I'm serious. If you're gonna go out into the ruins there, I the least I can do is give you the gold up front. Well what if there are like I, I hear maybe bandits there and shit? Like what if they just take the gold? It, it would be better if we didn't have any and we came back and got it, right? There's we not like there's gonna be anybody selling stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. We have funds, Cal. It'll be okay. When we return... You're good people, Cal. You know that? You're good people. Yeah, he gives you a nod, Trent, and he turns back to you, Merton, and says, Alright, if... As long as you guys are okay with it, I'm just... Just offering. I'll take my share. He, he looks over <laughs> and he goes, Right. Yeah, sure, Nitch. Here you go. And he gives you five gold. If anybody uh, comes sorry. to take this from me, it'll be over my cold, dead body. So, it might be more useful in my pocket than over here. No offense. The cool looks slightly uh, disappointed in Niche over here, but doesn't say anything. And does not reach for his own chair. He agrees with the party. Yeah. Hey, uh, if she's really there, and you guys get her back, I mean, you can pretty much call this place home, at least for a while. Sweet. Sounds good to me. Yo, can Is... we throw a party when we get back? Is that Trent. like kosher? Sure, Trent. That's that's fine. I mean, it's good for both of us, right? We get to celebrate. You get more business. Yeah, just don't bring any underage kids next time. I don't want the guard coming through here. Hey, I didn't bring them. They just happened to recognize me from town. Do I need to roll deception? Because that's definitely a lie. <laughs> he, he inhales like... <laughs> <laughs> and like turns back towards the rest of the group, just kind of ignores it and lets that one slide. Well, not well, to count. Come. come on. Well, hopefully, your friend Benevolence will be. Lead the way, Zeku. Is, that cool? is uh, we'll 100 it, gold the same as 100 silver pieces? No. 100 silver would be 10 gold. Oh, 50. It's, okay. Yeah, it's a 10 to 10 conversion each step up. Okay. Do you like? Does it matter to you? Like, if I. Because I know people are paying for like shit in silver and copper and stuff. I was just gonna put it in as silver, or should I put it in as gold? I would say any time that you're at an establishment, you can pretty much ch make change willingly. So if you oh, want to okay. do that while you're here, go for it. You don't even have to ask. But if you get yeah. like, if you find a hundred gold out in the wild or something, then you are now it, carrying. It is what gold. it is. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because uh, weight is actually a thing. Yeah. You gotta keep track of your weight. Logistics. And oh. All that. You do. Okay. Yeah, we play a lot, actually. Yeah. So, uh, Cal gives you guys a nod, and as you're preparing yourselves, he says, Good luck out there, guys. I hope it's uh, a quick trip there and back, you know? Yep, we yep, yep. Try not to worry too much. Don't, Don't get too much friend. adventure out there, Trent. <laughs> no such thing, friend. We'll yep. return shortly, Patron Cal. He looks over towards the rest of you, like, you know. Don't let the kid die out there. We'll watch him, Cal. We'll watch him. Alright, so are we um, headed to the ducks? Mm -hmm. Sure. Might as well. I'll lead them right over towards where the CDP is. What's up? Lead on, patron Zeku. Would I have, uh, would I have had enough time to, uh, to take a short rest during all of this? I'd say yeah. Okay, because I get my arcane recovery. I can get a spell slot back. Nice. Just in case anything happens on the boot. Yeah, if anybody wants, you would have gotten a short rest during this time. Mm. Mm. I'll take it. The group heads off, and gradually, 
uh, all together now, you make your way down towards the docks. Led by Zakul, you eventually end up at this ship he seems to have secured. Zakul, you can see that the boat is indeed a little bit busier than before, and some crewmates are there by the ship, currently rigging some stuff up. What's up, homies? The sailors kind of like look over and everything. One of them waves, and uh, somebody steps up, a familiar face, so cool. He says, uh, All right, you got the gold? I do. Five gold, one each for our passage. Um, before Zakul cool can pay him, I'll pay the five gold. Oh, no, no, no. No worries. I got it, Zakul. Cool. Young Tessa. I wait, get him, catch it on the way back. Right. Okay, thank you, young mm -hmm. Tessa. I wink at her back awkwardly as a dragonborn can. <laughs> I like to imagine you have those eyes that like blink sideways like there you go. <laughs> Ugh. He takes Ugh. the gold and he says, Alright, hop on. Yo, it's what's your name, nice. Cap? Captain's fine. How about Cap? <laughs> sure. It's cool. Me. I think you got screwed. Uh, we were told to pay a couple of silver, not five gold. The captain oh, turns over cool. and says, We're not negotiating the price. Get on. You've done enough of that talk. Me and your friend have hashed this one out already. Did you hear me negotiating? <laughs> he looks over and he says, There's not going to be a problem, is there? No problem at all, captain. Alright, we'll Come get on, on then. Let's get out of here. Always gotta make us think. I forgot. I only shared that information that we're gonna take these guys out with, um, with just Trent and yeah. Tessa. But I, I <laughs> said I would explain it later to Martin. I'm not slighting you, Captain. You got a uh, got away with the steal <laughs> totally here. I'm just trying to yell at uh, Zakul here. Okay. You guys make your way onto the ship gradually, and are we fast traveling over to the uh, ruins? That depends. Did this captain to royally fuck us out of money? Because that might be a problem. Would you like I to? Yeah, he so royally chat? did. Sometime during this uh, trip, is there a chance we can talk? Yeah, like, like in our quarters. Stuffily or privately a little bit? Or? I would have liked to make the um, the forgery for Trent, if I could. If the boat isn't too rocky. I would like to sit on my bed Indian style brooding. Right. Edgy as fuck. Uh, I would say that you guys are going to be placed at the hold. It's like a, a lower part on the ship, and over there in that corner, it's sort of cramped, but it is what it is. It's not really nice accommodations. It's a single room where you guys all lay out your bedrolls and everything. And uh, it looks like it's meant for storage, but crates and barrels have been evacuated from that area instead. If you guys want to speak in private there, you certainly can. Do you want to okay. do that on the first it, evening? Yeah. Sometime during the trip, I do want to talk to everyone privately. Okay, so we'll say that this is the uh, um, the first evening. Sun is going down, you have left port, and are chit-chatting here without anybody else around. Now, Paladin Merton, I know you had some concerns, but passage aboard reputable ships in the ruins of Mystic Town appear to be too gold a passenger, unlike what your pal uh, Charlie was saying. Perhaps it could have been my uh, appearance or some other concern or circumstance I am unaware. But I found this seedier bunch who has agreed to take us down for five or one gold each. No questions asked, as he said. So there's no guarantee that they will wait for us so kindly there for our return trip. Perhaps leaving just like this uh, lead boy expedition has. If you guys don't mind walking back, we could perhaps convince these fellas to take us down there as an act of charity. So the five gold is a negligible concern. I'd, I'm, I'd be Emily, okay with that normally, but you Emily should have told us. I'm going to take this guy out if we need, or at least tell them to give the money back. It's not the gold that concerns me, but the principle. Charlie said it was much cheaper. Charlie could have been wrong, you know. It's he doesn't really travel by boat much. I was checking along the docks for He's other a ships. Mm -hmm. What's up? Um, given that I'm kind of studied and uh, have history, would I know 
if there's any history of like racism in these parts or uh or perhaps what the no questions asked might might be referring to sure make a uh um a history check one fire die 15 15 okay uh, it's fair to say that the Dragonborn from off in the, uh, the separate realm, sort of close to Skyfall here, have some business here and there, and some people might treat them differently, but you don't think that there's actually anything really serious. There's no actual record of any kind of significant wars between Hillcrest and any of the uh, Dragonborn cities or anything like that. They kind of keep to themselves, so you don't think there's anything as far as racism goes. Just from being a kind of intelligent um, sort of fella, you think that the um, the thing that's happened here actually is that these people have charged a little bit of extra, assuming that your group is on the run from the law, or that you're in some way um, people that have uh, secured this kind of passage and are not the ones that want to be recorded. Gotcha. Uh, so as they're discussing, you know, like, are we gypped or like what happened? I'm just gonna be like, you guys, <laughs> you know what we're paying for, right? No. We the paid extra so that it's, uh, you know, off the books, off the radar. No, uh, no lawmen around. Furthermore, you think that the captain must have assumed that Zakul is like, a, you know, a merc or something like that. Uh, I'll like kind of give Zakul a once over and be like, you do kind of fit the part, big man. Sorry, you don't really like men very much. Dragonborn. <laughs> Dragon man. Perhaps if that was a circumstance. Well, perhaps we should tell the captain that we're not doing any, uh, Illegal activities. Well, yeah, well, I mean, no offense, guys, but look at us. There's like what five of you in bed rolls, <laughs> like crammed into like a little storage compartment of a ship. We got no like ship, five. Not all the ship already. manifest. <laughs> I, I got eight here. papers in my bag. I, I say we just let them ride this one out. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know about you guys, but thought of uh you know just getting there and getting this thing over and having some adventures feeling pretty good right about now <laughs> the guy with how the fake is... driver's license is like guys oh, this is probably fine you know <laughs> yeah how much but did you like... tell us about your need for fake papers i feel like i would have pressed on that uh i would have told you guys basically everything at this point i trust you guys if i'm believing in your paladin story then i've already opened up i mean i'm like a like a you know, I, I think I, I made myself legal to drink, which I don't know if that's 18 or 21 here, but I'm like, you know, just <laughs> barely able to to go into the bar and sit down reasonably. So I'm not like, you know, I'm not like worldly. I'm, I'm like a bookish kid who's gone wild. So I don't really have any reservations about sharing. Yeah. By the way, there's no official age. It's just kind of how things are played by ear in town. Like, if you're significantly baby-faced, if they think you're too young, then you'll just get told to leave kind of thing. I think I have a little bit of scruff in my picture. Yeah. It's just blonde, so it's hard to see. You're probably fine. It's like Mexico. <laughs> the two kids If, if, you could, if you're tall enough to slap the peso on the bar, you're old enough to drink. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, well, so you guys would probably know that I'm on the run from, uh, from Mr. Chow. Well, I'm the books are off. Actually, you would definitely know because I'm really proud of that rager I threw, and I can't brag to it about anybody else. So you guys have probably heard the story a <laughs> hundred times. times. So did you tell us your actual family name too? Uh, no, I would not have told you my actual family name. Though Merton would know from forging the papers. Yeah, you would know because you've seen the document, but you're the only one who knows, and I will whisper it to you. Will. Got it. Hey, I don't think hey, Tessa would cool? actually care what you did. Cool. You know, speaking of your legal papers, uh, yes, niche. Uh, good, good plan. Ne next time, tell us before we get on the boat, so I can buy some rations if we're gonna walk somewhere. 
You don't have any? You have no food. I have I have five days worth, but no, you're uh, fine. I thought we were going on a short trip here. We were walking back. It's going to be even longer. You gotta tell us that stuff, man. Only three days of walk back. You'll be, you'll, you'll be fine. All right. Just tell us first. I'll keep that in mind. But good work on the ship. Okay. I would like to get Trent his papers if the boat is uh, steady uh, enough. So I would say that you could definitely make this attempt, but if you're going to do it on a boat, it's going to be more difficult. So yeah, you may want to hold I'm off waiting. on it. Yeah, I'm, if it's more difficult. Uh, yeah. well, uh, the ship's rocking is definitely enough to throw off being delicate with parchment. And uh, furthermore, the winds seem to be pretty hefty. And by the time that uh, you guys are off on your way, um, things are pretty rocky and are going back and forth. So the waves are probably chopping you pretty bad. Are you guys... Is that kind of like your conversation before the next day? Yep, don't think I'm murdering the captain or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have prevented the murder of him. Do, do you want do you want us to uh pay them additional for the return trip then? I mean I got four days rations and it's a three day journey and we're you know I think uh I can share I don't know about you guys, days. but those beasts in the woods are I I've heard stories like at the, the tower that I came from, like even the mages don't fuck with those things, right? Like Trent, what's your sense of adventure? I travel everywhere. There's a sense of adventure beasts. and there's just stupidity. Let me tell you my tales of me traveling around with these beasts. And I will go into my most insane in-depth story from my book. Is this a fake story or like a fairy tale that you're going to say? Or is this actual it's, adventure? So here's what happens. On. Tessa opens <laughs> the book and tells you some stories. And you don't think that she's lying at all. But somehow... In all of her traipsing across the land, she has not bumped into a Hyperx beast once. And in, in no tale are they mentioned at all. Yeah, the Hyperx beasts, if I'm remembering here out of game correctly, Illusion, are like super impervious to magic. A lot of them are resistant to magic, yes. So... And they roam around yeah. and basically eat and destroy everything. And you don't <laughs> fuck with them. Like, nobody fucks with them. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Unless you're like, you know, hero of the realm, god tier adventurer, you don't fuck with the Hyprex beasts because the Hyprex beasts fuck everybody else. No, not god tier, but if you're talking like the average man, you definitely want like two of them at the very least to like the most meager of uh, of those beasts. Right. What is that? Hyperx, like the like the gaming thing. <laughs> I can spell it. Hyprex. I think it's Hyprex. Yeah. So. Given that um, I've been traveling and whatnot, and Charlie has uh, warned us about it, I would definitely recommend we just take the boat back if that's the case. Yeah, if you we know. have that option too, right? What is gold to our lives, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. We have more adventuring to do, guys. You only live once, okay. after all. Okay. The Yolo. rooms themselves may be plenty I love dangerous. that saying. You don't know how... Uh, what our condition will be after finishing our, our expedition. So, it's the next day, and you guys all slept. Uh, the rocking of the boat, for some of you, may have been troublesome, and for others, it may have actually kind of helped you fall asleep faster. But the next day rolls around, and I'm curious, would any of you stay under deck, or would you guys all kind of, you know, make your way upstairs during the day so you're not just stuck in this little room? Can I, I roll my uh, divination rolls for the day? Please, yeah, go for it. I definitely go upstairs. I, a sixteen. I would at least do my prayers to Zune, but other than that, I I would spend most of my time daylight up. I'd be upstairs, upstairs well. getting as much info mm -hmm. on the land as I can. So yeah, it's the next day, and the crew of sailors are, you know, uh, currently out on the deck, and most of them are kind of doing what you guys are doing which is uh, sort of looking over across the surrounding landscape. Coastline goes peeling by on one side of the ship and just like expansive sea in the other. 
and there's a set of mountains that are kind of like coursing past you guys on the left hand side of the ship and you're headed into a large cove of sorts and off in the distance you can see what looks like the ruins on the actual coast the captain calls to you guys as you're standing there kind of uh you know huddled around on the deck and he says the winds are pretty good probably get there uh right before sundown awesome so thanks uh, cap about you think that we can get a ride trip, back yeah how long are you gonna be in the ruins for maybe a day let's say two okay say two to be safe so i don't pay these boys just to stand around or nothing you need longer than two days. We're gonna have to talk about more gold. Two days will be two good. Days should be it. Two days. Two days. Should be days if we're not back, and then Captain. we'll pay more. I like it. Um, I like it can too. I spend the rest of the day uh, regaling the uh, the sailors, like the common sailors, not the captain or anything? With mm -hmm. my tales of uh, debauchery from college. Make a luck roll. And... Uh... I'm trying to make friends. Oh no, that's <laughs> not one. <laughs> Fuck off, little kid. <laughs> uh, I'd like it. you to make a performance check to see how well you tell the story. None of them have heard of it, though. Like, no one's heard of this, this rager that you threw. Performance is, I believe, plus two because I don't think I have proficiency in it. I just it. thought you net one twice. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, that's an eleven. Eleven okay. performance. So, as you tell this story, um, some of them seem to uh, be wrapped up in it, and others seem to not really care. But if there's one thing <laughs> um, that kind of lends itself in your favor, it's that when you're sailing over a long period of time, there's very little of anything to do. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some of them kind of play cards and whatnot. For others, though, hearing this story, um, though not perhaps masterfully told or anything, is actually like a really nice break from just kind of sitting about. And uh, you get, you know, like a small crowd, like two or three people seem to actually, you know, listen to it and all. And, uh, you the, know, chuckle along hearing some of the escapades that you went with. The big punchline to my story, which is like my, my big... Uh, attempt to uh, <laughs> to get everybody to befriend me is that I take out my uh, my teacher's book that he has uh, like you know I, I tell them like how he spent like his whole college career writing it and it's like his big piece and I stole it and he's so mad at me for it and uh, as far as I know it's the only copy because nobody would ever read this thing and or at least the first at copy of it yeah, I'll, like, pass it around and let everybody see it. One of them's laughing while another one takes it, and he, like, opens it up, flips through a couple pages, and he goes, eh, what a bunch of shit this is, and kind of hands it over to the next guy, and he goes, Shomar, you don't even read. He's like, yeah, but it's, <laughs> fuck you, man, and he, like, just punches it, <laughs> and he, he gets up and walks away from, like, the story circle. I'll, I'll like, call back to him, I'll be like, Shomar, wait, 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 watch this. And I'll like take the book back and with mage hand, I'll just like walk over to the edge of the boat and just like run it through the water and like bring it back up, just like dripping ink off it, like completely ruined <laughs> and just like drop it on the deck and be like, and now his life's work is destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Gee, Trent, do you think that's a little harsh? <laughs> this Jesus. guy's a prick. He deserves it. I don't know, Trent. You're kind of a prick for stealing his book with his life's work. You're you're like starting to kind of you know come down on Trent here and uh, you know critique the way he's handled the situation. But the three sailors are all laughing to themselves, so they seem to have enjoyed it. Young Tessa, the world will not miss the uh, the literary masterpiece that is music and magic. <laughs> you never know. Be like someone took my book and threw it in the water. I thought you were keeping it. Oh. Like I thought it was like a keepsake, and you just totally destroyed it. I mean, I'll st I'm still going to have it, but mm. it's just not going to be readable anymore. <laughs> not that it was readable in the first place. <laughs> uh, Wouldn't you have preferred until you meet him again and 
burn it in front of him or something. Oh. Damn it, Martin. So you gotta tell me these things beforehand. Um, that's that's um, evil. That's perfect. That's that's way better than what I just did. Well, as you can see, Tessa, not all people nor books are created equal. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's just me, but my life's works in my book too, so I'd be pretty devastated if someone did that to mine. I bet if your I was, health health fuck uh, is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Illusion. Yes. Are there such things as flares? Flares. Uh, there's probably there's magical bullets versions. And guns. There's bullets and guns and gunpowder. I would say that they probably exist in the world. Are they a well-known thing? No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> we just need alchemical salt pepper. <laughs> So as you guys get closer and closer towards the shore here, the evening starts to come on, and with the sun sort of setting off in the distance, it starts to take on a kind of almost like an eerie aspect. There's little light um, coming over into this area here, and your ship, with the sun sort of behind it, casts a really long um, shadow all over the bay here. And the ruins look to be incredibly calm. There's not really anything going on there. The boat does not go straight up, though, to the uh, the coast. And instead, they anchor off the side. And you can see that there's this rowboat that has been hauled out. And one of the sailors instructs your group on how things are going to work. And he says, All right, well, you know, we can't just go right up to the coast and whatever. So and take this dinghy. Uh, when you get back, just, you know, wave a torch around or something, and we'll come out and get you. Gotcha. Captain says you got Where'd two you days. We'll wait around a bit longer if you want, but, you know, it's going to cost extra, he says. That's fine. We're not out in five days. Then what? Then feel free to leave us. We'll find our own way home. We'll pay you when we get back. All right. And if we don't, well, then we're dead. And You can come get the gold off our bodies. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, starts to kind of, like, go down the rope ladder there and ends up in the little dinghy with the oar and, uh, you know, waits for you guys to get in there. Do you guys go with him to the shore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. At this point, I need to ask you guys something. How long do we have tonight? Because I was going to end in about 30 minutes or so. Do we have longer? I know people have um, things they have to do and whatnot. I'm going to have to yeah, cut it off then because i got to get up early for class. Gotcha. It's okay. Same as these. Sounds good. You guys make your way into this, uh, this little boat here. It's not a very big thing, maybe like 10 feet across, and start to uh, head over towards the shore. With both oars in hand, you kind of, you know, Looks over his shoulder on occasion there, and uh, stares over towards the ship, and gradually rows you guys in. The ruins of Misty Town are strange. They're... It's only really the stonework which has managed to survive throughout the years, and all around in the area, the wood has rotted away, and there aren't even timbers, really. So you can see through most of the homes. And it gives this weird sort of sliding imagery, where you can see past one layer of houses, at another layer, and then past that another one. And as you move by in the, uh, in the ship here, they all kind of shift, right? Like as you're kind of going past, you're like looking at windows through windows sort of thing. Would it be possible, Lucian, for me to do a detect magic ritual during the uh, the rowboat ride in? I'd say so, yeah. Okay, then I will be working on that while we're rowing in. Okay. As you're going along, you eventually make your way up towards the beach, and uh, your detect magic thing is uh, finished by now, your ritual is over, and the boat is just kind of giving off that strange sound of sand rubbing up against the bottom of the hull. And I'd like everyone to make a perception check. 
Do I still get to roll even though I'm doing the ritual? Or is the ritual finished? Your ritual is done, so I'd say yes. Seven. Oh, no. Fire die. Fire. Fifteen. Okay. Two, three. <laughs> The sailor speaks, and he says, Okay, well, you might get your boots wet a little bit, but not going in any further. This boat doesn't exactly fly like the stuff you see back home. And uh, <laughs> as you guys look around and go to step off of this little dinghy, Tessa, and who's the one that got 22 there? Uh, Trent. Trent. Tessa and Trent, you notice something is amiss, and it's like there's a ripple in the water nearby that isn't one of the waves and then you both realize that you're kind of looking in the same area and after a double take you look back at the water and see unmistakably what must be a set of eyes underneath the water's surface and we're going to end the session there Ooh. oh shnikes <laughs> that word is forbidden forever <laughs> damn it that was your one. Everybody gets one. Ooh, I get one? Okay. I'll, I'll save it. Yeah, save your Nike for another Ooh, time. I'm going to save it for a real good time. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you all for uh, for coming by. I know that uh, some of you have lives and everything, and, uh, you know, like, lateness Fucking happens. Fucking people and... with lives. <laughs> yeah, who needs them? Eh. <laughs> um, I, can I just ask you a question? I'm this sure. map eh. is absolutely beautiful. How did you make this map? Just, just time. <laughs> this map yeah. is beautiful. You worked on it so it? hard. Yeah. Like, you should down honestly, download like, the actual did, one. Yeah, there's how did you do it? Uh, I opened up a, a, you know, an image program, basically like a, a not pirated like, Photoshop, but like a free like version. Like there's of it. actual. This looks like a map. But like there's curvature to it. Like there's like wrinkles in the page. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put some attention to detail in it. I made an old one, and I just. I felt like I have to make it better than that one. So every time I make like a you map, have it's... inspired me to do one, but there's no way. I, I, <laughs> I am I am not artistic. I am autistic, but I'm not They're... autistic enough to spend the time. So the I'm wrinkles like, and the stains. I, I don't. I'm too much of a normal boy to make this. It just takes time, dude. I'm not like a graphic wizard or anything. I never used an image program other than MS Paint until I started doing this thing. Right. Oh, what, what program did you use? GIMP. GIMP? Yep, G I M P. I feel like I'm being trolled now. No, no, no. Weird that's, that's, no actually, it, it that's actually a, a what, that's actually a it's program. It's not as capable as Photoshop, but it's free. So, basically, what it is. Anyway, how much time do you think you spend on this? Too I'm much. sorry to ask you a million questions. <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I'll right. answer them all. I, I just want to finish the session first here. So, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I thought we were. I'd like to thank all of you guys um, for coming by. I hope you enjoyed the first session. It feels good to be doing Skyfall once more, and uh, awesome. I hope you guys had fun. Um, to all the players, oh, I think yeah. you handled that. Uh, you handled that masterfully. It was great to see some role play stuff and kind of have your group come together. I think having a the group set up ahead of time was a really good choice too yep and uh thanks to the audience for coming by always good to have some people watching and to all the patrons none of this would be possible without you so uh you have my supreme gratitude we have a week off coming up but there are three more sessions this week and uh perhaps i'll see some of you guys then so adios bye yep. stream bye. Well, bye. thank you for the session illusion thank no you no problem I already oh, found my first three victims. <laughs> oh no! Oh, Illusion just oh. handed them to us on the street. Add, add the butler to that list, man. <laughs> the butlers. Now, Illusion, before uh, you close this here, yes. I want to point out. Um, 